What is going on, everybody? This is episode 582 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and if you have looked at the thumbnail, you know that my co-host is, in fact, back. Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Yes, I'm back. It's not clickbait. Monday was clickbait. Brett told me that some people fell for it on April 1st of all days. There was definitely some people who unsubscribed. It's obviously <laughs> not true. The, okay, so here's the thing. Some people unsubscribed because they didn't like the joke. Like, uh, you know, oh, they, they were like, they were like oh, hurt. Oh, oh, it's the last so podcast. So we're, we're not Better allowed unsub. to do an April Fool's episode? You're not. You're not. You're, well, you're banned. Well, whatever. It's not, good. We're, we're weeding out the people who don't like jokes. The best part is I wasn't even like, I didn't even want to do it. Mary's like, it do was it. My and then Mary idea. wasn't even here. <laughs> it was my psycho idea. And then I was edited out of the thumbnail. But you should have kept me in the thumbnail because then it would be like, what? Mary's not here? It actually is the last episode. Yeah, right. Well, when I did the intro, I said, I'm here, and then I just cut to your chair, and there's just nobody there. Yeah. 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 Ghost chair. Um, anyway, Sarah's here. Hey, guys. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, excited to be here and uh, hang she out with you guys well on either, this right? Wednesday. I was not doing too great. I felt bad because Brett asked mm -hmm. me to come on a couple times this week, and I was like... I don't know if I'm a lot of it, people but... have not been okay. Like I was just talking to Kim, she lost her voice, yeah. and Dude. I don't know if it's all the same thing, but I think I had strep. Literally, I just got oh, everybody dang. sick. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> like, I... bro, <laughs> you really, you really. It's not my fault. Everybody was a bunch of no. Wusses. Something you really going just could have taken round, Tuesday man. off last week, but it, now we're now we ended up in this situation. It's yes. all Brett's fault. It really is probably it all is. my fault. But look, I don't <laughs> like to take time. I, I get antsy, even when I'm not feeling good. I get antsy, mm -hmm. and I sit there and like I'm twiddling my thumbs. Brett's a workaholic. And, uh, I don't know how to do it with the downtime. It's like I'm always excited when the weekend comes, and then by Sunday I'm like. <laughs> because like I can't always like okay so I can go skate but there isn't always going to be people to necessarily go skate on on both days so I can get out and get physical exercise mm -hmm. but I feel like I need to get back to work by the you by the next day you need a human sized yeah. Hamster wheel. That's a great idea. <laughs> that you can run that's around. That's room. something that Dan Schneider would have implemented on Nickelodeon back in the day. Um, true, actually. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. Uh, guys, we got a bunch of stuff to get into today. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before we get started, would you please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Perhaps resubscribe if you were angry at us because we uh, played a <laughs> joke on Monday and you have no sense of humor. Uh, remember, all Super Chats, $20 and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read those Super Chats right then and there. And then we will do our best to stay on topic and get back to whatever we were talking about. Also, remember to share these videos with your friends. We want more people to come in here, hang out, watch these live streams, and check out the segments. So go ahead and do that, please and thank you. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, the first thing we're going to discuss is the fact that Kanye is being accused of some pretty horrific things by a former employee over there at the Donda Academy, which, you know, I, I never remember Donda. Donda Academy feels like so long ago. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that shut down <laughs> long time quickly. Ago, I wonder but. why. And, and <laughs> like, I, I just imagine that you know, with school choice being such a thing, can I school choose to send my kids to Donda Academy? <laughs> I should be able to. You know? uh, I'm in LA. Probably not. Yeah, probably yeah. not. So we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about the obvious thing that was very, very obvious that people pretended wasn't obvious, and that was that Lizzo wasn't, in fact, leaving the music industry. She uh, decided to make another post clarifying her words. I'm sure everybody is very sad about that, so we will talk about that news. We're also going to talk about the fact that Pokimane, Dakota Fanning, and many other celebrities are having baby fever right now. And uh, the ladies just want to have kids. They're looking for their baby daddies. <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown was saying something about this too, about wanting kids. So like all sorts of celebrities. Oh, are she coming was. Out. Oh, yes, she oh, was. Let me look that up. So oh, so we'll talk about that. We got a bunch of also. Other I stuff can't to get into. hear you guys as well. I don't know if I'm the problem, but did you change the levels? Yes. Uh, okay. So I changed. I turned the gain down, and it's okay. just our audio levels. So we're still here. I can turn your headphones up if you. Could need. you do yeah. that? Hold on. One I want to look up Millie Bobby Brown comments about wanting children is that any her. better any better yeah okay yeah i think it's right. back to normal yep i had um, to do that because of uh, the four person episode the other day so we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> everything talk everything millie bobby brown has said about having children as she prepares for a new chapter with jake bon jovi of course <laughs> Jake okay. and John. So, all right. We got a bunch of stuff to get into. So, if you ladies are ready, we will just go ahead and get started. Mary, are you ready? I'm ready. It'd be weird if you weren't. You come back. You've been off for two days. I'm finally you... ready. Okay. <laughs> Sarah? I'm ready. All right. Let's go ahead and get started then, shall we? First things first, big news. 
7-Eleven announces bring your own cup and fill anything with Slurpee for $1.99 on April 13th. This is like the biggest news I could find today. Why <laughs> April 13th? No it's clue. Why? Is that like National Slurpee Day or something? What do they do on July 11th? Uh, That's free Slurpee Day. Is that free Slurpee yeah, Day? Yeah, yeah. Well, the fact that you both know that is scary. Um, <laughs> This lady's got the right idea with the uh, water jug here. You can see in the picture. The only rules are that your cup must be clean, watertight, and fit under the 10-inch drink nozzles to qualify. Have you ever seen that video of the guy who's like, um, there's this really funny video where the guy's trying to fill like a drink and he can't get it right. It keeps going off like the side. And the guy goes, no, 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 no. And then he puts it in there and he, he like puts his hand like this <laughs> and puts it through the, the thing so that the drink goes through his fingers okay, rather than just pushing the drink against Look it. at the girl in the photo, though. There's literally no way that you can even drink that. No. It's, no, it's a great idea for, like, a birthday party. I guess. Plan your parties for April 13th. I guess the, the, the gross stuff here is probably the Coke Slurpee. Also, mm -hmm. Slurpees are overrated, and I never liked them. That looks like modern art, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah, it actually. Like bad modern art. I used to like Slurpees when I was a kid. Yeah. I just loved sugar. I love some I of the examples that people have of what they would like to use to fill their cups up here. One guy has a kiddie pool. I would love. I, I mean, these aren't watertight though, so or that airtight. That doesn't count. Yeah. So yeah, they wouldn't be able to use them. Well, I just know there are going to be a lot of Stanleys. Oh yeah, <laughs> lots Honestly. of Stanleys. Do you have your Stanley? Did you have it? Uh, yeah. You got it back here today. I disinfected it. Okay. Don't worry. Perfect. Uh, the lead's not going to kill you then. That's what you got to worry about. The lead killing you. Yeah. I. I look. I haven't. Are there? There's a Seven Eleven over here. There's mm -hmm. one over by like a Walmart. Yeah. yeah. I never go because I go to Sheets where real men go. Sheets, the Sheets is obviously superior. Exactly. Yeah. I don't understand what 7-Eleven has to offer that Sheets doesn't have in a better version. I haven't been eating Slurpees. the tacos either lately. I've been getting the Good meatball for you. sub. Because you can get okay. two halves. And You're maturing. Save, yeah. save yeah. half for later. Really growing up, right? Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, I'm thinking ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a multi-stage thinker now. That's, that's what's going on. <laughs> So, yes. Uh, so just be, be aware, April April 13th. And remember, the month of April is now Gapril. What? Yep. Why? Yep. That's I, I saw it on the internet, so it's true. April is Gapril. So, so April June, June isn't the only Pride Month. You have two now. You have yep. two. Hmm. Okay. I mean, if they wanted the pun that badly, they could have just made April Pride Month in the first place. Yep. I just realized that Pride Month is coming up. Yep. Oh. Are you excited, Mary? No. Getting ready? No. Well, what about excited. May, though? Then you uh, just have this awkward yeah. gap. It could in the just middle. be gay instead yeah. of just May. Gay. But you have gay yeah. April, gay. Yeah. Coom. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, just uh, bring your cups with you for, uh, to, uh, to a 7 Eleven on April 13th. You'll be, you won't regret it, I'm sure. Uh, oh, no, you'll regret it. You'll get a, you'll get <laughs> no a, credit the next day. a headache. And All right. Diabetes. Uh, bad news from Hollywood. Drew Goddard, director Drew Goddard, is set to write and direct a new Matrix movie. I was going to hold off on this, but I knew Sarah would love to talk about this because she loves this movie. I was excited when I saw this, and I noticed this was not in the articles you sent me for today that yes. we'll be talking about. Yeah. Um, Thoughts? They have one of the Wachowski sisters, uh -huh. quote unquote. Yeah. Um, Lana will be executive producing. Directing, uh, or no, not not directing, just executive Code producing, direct. no writing credit. Looks like yeah, Drew just... Goddard will write and direct. He did The Martian with Matt Damon, right? Huh. So, I never watched that one. It was good. Was I it? liked that. Yeah. Yeah. That was I mean, it doesn't matter because like doing a good, it's kind of like my, one of my favorite things. Like when they were advertising Man of Steel, mm -hmm. they were like from executive producer Christopher Nolan, which doesn't mean anything because he's not the writer or the director on it. For this, yeah. having the Wachowskis as a as a One executive producer doesn't matter, and having Drew Goddard doesn't matter because it's a property that doesn't need to have a fifth movie made. Wait, right. so what was the big hullabaloo around the fourth movie? It was bad. It was, it really was bad. so bad, and they changed everything. They changed the whole gist of it. They basically said Neo was not the one. Was that one directed by the Wachowskis? Yes, Lana, yeah. I yeah. think. Just one of them. I think just one of them. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The well, can, somebody can fact check me on that. I think I, I'm one of the sure sisters right. just did that one because it wasn't both of them. Then clearly it's not a red flag. You know, if you saw that there was a Harry, a Harry Potter movie in the works that doesn't have J.K. Rowling on it, yeah. um, directing or writing, mm -hmm. then you would be worried. But obviously this has no bearing on whether it's going to be good or not. We just know it's going to be bad because it's coming out in this decade. Because it's the Matrix. Uh, so he says it should be titled <laughs> Matrix Rebooted. That actually is what it should be called. I guess. Given the, you know, the all the other... Reloaded. Yeah. Re, you know. Reloaded. Or they should just not make it. 
That's what, that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. the, be, the best thing forward would be to not do it at all. Or like I would compromise with what I was saying earlier with a remake. Just start from no. scratch. No. I mean, I don't, I'm not no. saying that's what I want either. But if I had to choose between a fifth Matrix movie with Keanu, who's like, what, 60 almost? Well, no, yeah. they're saying it's unclear if yeah. they're going to get any of the original cast members anyway. <laughs> so it's probably going to be an all new here's cast. The, here's yeah. the with Timothy Chalamet. It's got to be <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> Yeah, it's always it's or Tom time. Holland. It's always or Tom no, Holland. but like Tom Holland is less serious. He's taken less seriously. Here, here's the thing, like Keanu Reeves, he's got a problem. You know what that problem is? He doesn't know how to say no. He just he's agrees. too nice he's of just, a guy. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> I watched this thing that I was talking about. Like he he would do that. They they went through his career. It's like one good movie, one bad movie, one good movie, one bad movie. Because he'd do a good movie, and then like a friend would ask him to be in this movie, and he wouldn't say no. So he'd do the movie, and it would suck. And then he'd do a good movie, and then a bad movie, and then a good movie, and then a bad movie. So they'll be like, Hey, Keanu, you want to be in this movie? Be like, Fine. Sure, but like he'll say no, and then Lana Wachowski will be like, Keanu, come on, please, and he'll be like. Okay. I didn't even realize that Jada was in the original yes. Matrix. Yeah. Was in she the first like a, one? No, she was in the second, the second one, one, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't see the second one. Honestly, either. no Matrix other than the first one is good. Yeah. I like, honestly, like, I, I, <laughs> I might be, get be hate for this, but I didn't seriously. really even like the first one. That's okay. That's I wasn't acceptable. crazy about that movie. It was like a... With. It was in like an era, like you kind of had to be there. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. When we were watching the trailer for The Crow, I said you can't remake The Crow because it, right. ba it has basis in the graphic novels, fine. But that's not where 90% of your audience is coming from. 90% of your audience is coming from previous viewing of the original Crow with uh, <clears throat> with Brandon Lee. Right. And there is, it's going to be like when they remake Blade or if they tried to make remake something like Dark City – from Proyas, which is that it's dark, it's industrial, it's uh, got it's gothic in its tone. It's new metal, and it's new and it's, it's new and metal. it's indicative of the late '90s. Like unless I get to see like a 26 year old Fred Durst it's standing PVC, next to me, yeah, it's trip pants, yeah, <laughs> it's it is. chains. Isn't that making a comeback now though? Back when goths Goth, were actually goth is coming back. They just, they can't do it. They, they can't do it now. I said the only way that they could redo Blade in a way that I would like or re redo like The Crow in a way I would like is if they actually shot it on 35 millimeter film mm -hmm. and actually shot it on all actual locations and not on sound stages. Or if you did sound stages, they would have to be the blatantly fake ones that look like a fake city was just built in the middle of like, this. <laughs> I, I love that Me aesthetic too. too. I love that aesthetic too. That's fine. But they're not going to do that. Like the new Crow movie just looks like it's supposed to be John Wick, which is stupid. Yeah, like what if John Wick was emo? Yeah, I don't want. I, don't, I mean, John Wick is emo he enough. He's super emo. He's super uh, emo. You yes, think he is. John Wick is emo? Coded? Absolutely, he's emo. Why? Because he goes and murders like seven hundred people because his dog died. But emos don't do that; they hurt themselves. I mean, he he literally got okay. So yeah. here, here's the thing: John he likes Wick, the abuse, John though. Wick did the impossible mission so that he didn't have to be in that world anymore. And then he re like reintroduced the abuse to himself when he could have just stayed out of it. That's pretty emo. That is pretty. And he yeah. did it all for a woman. That's emo. True. Is it? Yes. It's, it's Are emo. emos just and, romantic and like he, that? And he did it for Bridget Monahan, who was like, you know, like it's not like okay, I'm gonna that's gonna be mean. I'm not gonna go there. Wow. But, <laughs> it, that was a joke. Okay. The point Bridget Monahan's beautiful, but the point is is that he like the the whole first two movies is just him watching his ex wife on a phone. It's literally like the Wolverine meme where he's like touching the picture, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. That's what it is. Okay, solid thesis. He's, he's emo. Yeah, you've convinced me. So <laughs> there's just, there's no reason to make a, a new Matrix movie and doing it is just going to damage the brand further. Do they really, I would rather, you know what I'd rather they did? I'd rather they like put it into theme parks. Mm. Like more, like seriously, everybody's courting the, oh. the, 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 um, the kid, the dinks. Right? Who Just owns find a bunch of. I, I don't know. It's Warner Brothers. So they could put it at. Uh, maybe they license it to Universal. Oh, that would be awesome. So People they love just, Universal. They just, they just give Matrix. They're pro this probably exists. I have no idea. This probably really? exists somewhere. I, wait, let me look at What it they up. should do is they should just. Um, you should be able to go through like a tunnel with bullet time with like the slow moving bullets as you like walk through. <laughs> like that's what they should be doing with this. They should they should do their own version of that like cursed Wonka land. I only see the There's Matrix. There's a lot they could do other than making another movie. The Matrix exhibit is a walkthrough exhibition experience at Warner Bros. Movie World in Australia. So that's the closest thing you have. Yes. 
Uh, in the chat, Bravo Dave says, John Wick did it in memory of the dog. He did it in memory of the dog that his dead wife gifted right, him. Right. Which, by the way, is not a real thing, I bet. I, I don't think there's a service where your dead wife can just send you a dog after she dies. I don't think that's a real thing. If it is, somebody let me know. <laughs> well, I mean, it must be a thing now. It could be a lucrative <laughs> business venture. They've seen the movie and they have the idea, so. <laughs> Look, the, the, like, all they got to do is they got to turn the Matrix into something you can, like, like an exhibit you can go through and, yeah, and see. So it's the, in Australia. Yeah. You have okay. to go to the Upside Down Land to see it. Well, then they need to do it here in America and then make their money <laughs> Where that things way. actually and, matter. And, honest, and if I'm being completely honest... The Matrix is one of those shows, if, if I was to give them the benefit of the doubt, probably lends itself better now to a television show than a movie anyways. Mm. Given how much lore there is uh, that Maybe. they've tried to build in super, like, su like really pseudo-intellectual dialogue. Like, uh -huh. There are so many Matrix-inspired projects already, including TV shows, that it's just almost pointless to yeah. revisit it now. Yep, I, have, I just don't have an interest in it. I would see it if Keanu would cut his hair and, and have the slick back, back short with hair chicken fat. Yeah. rather than yeah. the with long Crisco. hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, he like really pulls the trench coat out of uh, out of storage and dusts it off. And mm -hmm. Straight nostalgia. But the, the fourth one was so bad. The video game like theme of it was really yeah. stupid. It could have been good. I actually thought that was kind of cool that he didn't realize he was back in the Matrix. Nope. The premise of that could have been explored more, but they just did too much. Or if they were gonna make another John Wick, they could have Angie Harmon play John Wick because her dog just got oh shot no. by an Instacart Go, worker. Okay. <laughs> did you see that? I heard. Did you see that? Dude, that's horrible. Dude. Like, I feel bad that it's funny. <laughs> if you I feel see bad that I laugh. Shit, I know, I know, I feel terrible. Okay. I don't know what it is, but I, I spend a lot of time, like on Instagram, people will treat pets just how? as if they can do no wrong, dogs and cats as if they can do no wrong. The comments on this were like, well, the dog deserved it. Why wasn't it? <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding you. The, the, Do the, people hate Angie Harmon? Yes, because she's a conservative. Oh. I, mean, I, I didn't get oh, that. Oh, so it was a Republican I did not dogs, get that no vibe. None of the, it's not like they mentioned this in the article, so it's not like they were saying. The jokes are always about how cops are the ones that kill your dog, but yeah. it's actually the Instacart drivers you need it's to worry about. It's the Instacart drivers. And then there was the video on TMZ the other day about the guy who, like, abducted a cat, <laughs> but then apparently the cat wasn't abducted. It was a DoorDash driver yeah. that... Literally, you can see him on the ring camera because everyone has those now. Uh -huh. Walking away with their outdoor cat. Uh huh. Which is why I think outdoor cats maybe shouldn't exist because anyone can just. It is a weird thing. Take your guys. Cat. I'm yeah. telling you, go read the it's comments really on any cat. of the. Go read the comments on any of the things talking about Angie Harmon and the dog. Like, well, why wasn't the dog on a leash? I'm like, I feel like you should just defend the dog either way. Like, that's just me. I just don't. I want to know the backstory. Yeah. Like, why mm. did the guy shoot the dog? People did are the dog alleging do that the dog aggressive? was like aggressive. Like, oh, the dog probably like yeah. attacked him, or there had to be some reason why. It's a possibility. Yeah. It yeah. is possible. I mean, I want to hear both sides. Why would you go up and just? There shoot were good people on both sides, <laughs> <laughs> and there was one bad dog. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let us move on then, guys. Here we go. Uh, oh, we're not going to watch that today. Sorry. All right. Th what did we talk about with uh, with Boy Meets World? If your career stalls, you just start a podcast talking about your show. Yeah, th but this is different. This is a rewatch podcast for Suits. I think it's different when like all of the former child stars get to do mm. the whole nostalgia thing where they're literally reliving their childhoods and mm -hmm. I get the appeal of that. Yep. Um, the issue with those podcasts is they never get the star. <laughs> yes. <'cause laughs> they can't get Selena Gomez on the Wizards of Waverly Place podcast. Yeah. That's never going to happen. And then you just have the weird Ned's Declassified one where they're talking about how they were like having sex in their trailers when they were 14 years Ew. old. It's just really weird. I, I don't get it. I, I don't watch them. I don't have any interest in watching a podcast from the perspective of the people that made the show. Mm -hmm. I feel like that makes more... Because you like had nothing to do with it. Right? I feel... No, it's more... It's like... I, I feel like that makes more sense with like specific interviews and questions. But like... I would rather hear like a, a third party's perspective. Like I, I listen to quite a few X-Files podcasts. I wouldn't listen to one with Gillian Anderson and Dave mm -hmm. Duchovny because it's going to be jaded. And it's going to be the right. real story. I don't want the fucking real story. <laughs> I don't want to well, hear. No, I, mean, I don't want to hear. You would want to hear from the, this the, great the writers, scene. right? The writers and directors. Even then, you like, want to see like I, an I like analytical. The I like the fans. Uh -huh. analytical also, perspective. like, why isn't there such a thing as like a traveling podcast that? has a new host every week or whatever. What do you mean? You can hand it off to someone. Like it goes to a new... Yeah. I mean, I think because a, a big part of podcasting is the is the personality of the person hosting it. It'd be very hard I to guess. sell people on that. Yeah. They get like attached to the host. 
True. Like I'm telling you right now, like, like if you. I <laughs> exactly like if you left the show, everybody would just migrate over to where to wherever you went. But like that is, when it comes to the X Files or something like that, they love the last you too, thing, Brett. Let's not for, get it twisted. The last thing I want to do is like read about how or listen to like how my favorite scene in the whole show. She's like, oh, I was tired that day. I didn't eat. <laughs> like, oh, I was in such a bad mood. I was three months pregnant. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, I want to hear what it meant to the people that watched it, not how you ate a bat like a bagel with like bad cream cheese and felt right. shitty the whole day. Mm-hmm. Like, All David Duchovny that. would say is like, oh, Duchovny. I was so hungover, I don't even remember. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't mean Sex to be a pronunciation <laughs> Nazi, but Duchovny? Oh, man. Duchovny. Mi- Bro. <laughs> what? Wait, how did I say Duchovny. it? Duchovny. Duchovny? Is that how I say I mean, it? I know there's a CH. On a scale, <laughs> on a scale of um, Duchovny to Cavill. Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I forgot about Cavill. <laughs> Poor Rolo. Where does that land in the... Where you know, does that a, land in for the... For a Henry Cavill no. stand, you should know how his name is pronounced. It's like when people get mad at me for saying Gal Gadot, even though that's how she pronounces it. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. I posted the short of him saying Cavill because yeah. I wanted people to comment about it. And it worked. <laughs> a $20 super chat from Jay Raymond says, Welcome back, Mary. Thank you. Yes. Happy to be back. Yes. I just... Um, Duchov. Duchov. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I mean, to be, to be fair, nobody ever gets my, like when I do like outside, when I go on other podcasts, they say Dasovic. And I just never correct him because I don't really, I don't really care. Uh-huh. And then like mm-hmm. I super chatted the, I, I would go on this podcast called the Salty Nerd every couple of weeks or for, like, every couple of months, and you would always say Dasovic, and it would be funny because <laughs> Matt Kadish would always get mad when people would pronounce Kadish wrong, but I would just never correct him. And then finally I super chatted him the other day, and he finally got it right <laughs> when I paid him. He like, corrected I, himself. I gave him money, but therefore he, he I, said it right. Like what annoys me is when people assume. My name is a double name because Morgan is yes. a lot. A lot of people have that name, or they just call me Morgan because they think my name is Morgan. Mm. Wait, do they actually think it's like Mary Morgan something? Like, I guess. Like, I mean, oh, like like <laughs> Hannah Mary Claire, Morgan. Mary Morgan. But like some they think people it's a two-part first name. So, like I guess that would be like if people. No, I can't think of a, any meaningful comparison. But people sometimes think that my name is Lisa Morgan. Marie Presley. I guess, mm. but <laughs> but like. That's, they think there's a hyphen. Mary Morgan Uh, Morgenthal. Or they just think that my name is Morgan. Yeah. Which would never happen. (laughs) They think that your name is Morgan, but you go by Mary Morgan. I guess. Mm. Okay. Reality is people don't actually care who you are, <laughs> uh, the, which is th- fine. This is the perfect time for them to launch this because Suits did is still doing really, really well in the streaming numbers given the fact yeah. that it's been off air for years. So if they were going to do this. That doesn't mean that people want to listen to a podcast about it. They just want to watch the show. Technically, they got one of the two main stars. Gabriel Did they Ma- get Meghan Markle where she can talk like her scripted <laughs> podcast? No. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Suits Rewatch podcast. So Sarah- here's how I was stereotyped and oh oppressed on the set of Suits. Those pencil skirts were just so oppressive to me. The pencil skirts were too tight. I couldn't stand it. And I didn't have the nerve to tell the producers. And Aaron Korsh just said, wear the skirt, (laughs) bigot. The costume designer said I should be a size two. (laughs) But Patrick J. Adams was one of the two main stars with Gabriel Macht. I don't know what Gabriel Macht is doing these days, but maybe he's like, I wouldn't be surprised somebody could look this up if Gabriel Macht is probably co-producing the new suit spinoff that they're doing. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if oh, they I gave Oh, I forgot about the spinoff already. With, uh, with Stephen Amell from mm-hmm. Arrow, um, mm-hmm. they're doing. So, uh, at least they got Patrick J. Adams. Sarah Rafferty, her character is like one of the, is a fan favorite. Okay. So, that makes sense. But, but you're not, people don't not realize, you're not going to be listening to a podcast of the characters. <laughs> Talking no, about right. the it won't be Mike Actors and Donna. It won't be about... Mike and Donna. But It'll people be... don't like characters. the nature of it is that you don't understand the difference between them and their characters, and you're just theoretically. I should like this stuff because I love audio commentaries mm-hmm. on things. But that's when I can see it. Like I can, you know, I can watch it while I'm listening to the commentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I love audio commentaries from movies and television shows. But for some reason, the, there's just something grandiose about the idea of like making a whole podcast about it for every episode, even though I probably would have paid extra. At one point, I think I probably did tweet like I would pay extra for like a, a streaming service that had audio commentaries on every episode. Literally no one else would I'm pay the only person. Would, I'm the only person. You would be would the only that. person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I'm not saying I want them to make money. I'm saying I want them to provide something. For uh-huh. All right, guys. Here we go. Um, so first, 
uh, Brett Cooper steals the role of Snow White from Rachel Zegler. Well, Rachel Zegler has decided to fire back. She stole Heathers from Brett Cooper. It's weird, right? Yes. So a film adaptation of the Broadway musical of Heathers. Can you explain? Okay, so I've never seen Heathers. Can you explain? They're doing the same thing to Heathers that they did to Mean Girls. So Heathers, the movie, was made into an off-Broadway musical. And now they're going to make a film adaptation of the musical of Heathers. Can you explain to me what Heathers is? Because I've never seen it. I actually saw it somewhat recently. So um, basically... It's just a bunch of high school girls that start getting into like this. Um, I guess they, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's one of those movies that like it's like Clueless. Like things don't actually happen. But basically, I love that about Clueless. It's Winona Ryder and Christian Slater, and they're in this relationship, and he's super crazy, and he keeps on trying to commit murders with her. And she she decides she doesn't want to be involved in it anymore. She should Rose Blanchard then. <laughs> she doesn't want to be involved in it anymore. And it like escalates into like a bombing situation. It's, yeah, that's basically it. But That's more um, of like a character and then plot driven movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'll check it out. I think so. You know what we need then? We it's, need it's, I really like it. But they made it into a musical to ruin it. Then obviously. what we need to do is get Brett Cooper and Rachel Zegler to do Thelma and Louise together. When would that happen? I have no idea. <laughs> the I, world would implode. I, like, I'm just saying, you know. Hey, I saw though. that Pete Parada and The Defiant were on Jimmy Kimmel last night. Anything can happen. Okay. Um, I just thought this was funny because, I don't know if you guys know this, but Brett Cooper was in a TV series adapted from Heathers, which yes. I, never, I never watched that. But um, it's just a, I, like, I feel like it's, I just got a kick out of that. That they're connected to both of these things. I like the idea that both of them have like Google alerts set for the other person. They do. They <laughs> do. Rachel Zegler has a Brett Cooper Google alert and Brett Cooper has a Rachel Zegler Google <laughs> alert. Yeah, I think uh, they should settle their beef and do a movie together. They should. That's why I said Thelma <laughs> and Louise. But Rachel Zegler would never. No, they should. Rachel she, Zegler. She doesn't, she doesn't want to associate with transphobes. She'll be like, I, how am I supposed to do a movie with a transphobe when there's a genocide going <laughs> on in Gaza? No, but listen, like, she didn't do a terrible job at all in the Hunger Games prequel. Nope. So this might actually be fine. That's, that's what I, I, I thought it was funny how everybody thought we were going to hate that movie. I'm just, I'm we tired like, of the musical movies. It. They're yep. going to release a deceptive trailer that makes everyone think it's a, a Heather's reboot. But the, it's not a reboot. The Joker, uh, Fully Adieu, 15 songs. That's... 15 songs. That's a lot. Yeah. If my prediction or my hope was, my, my hope was that they only sing when they're, like, when they're murdering people. Did you guys react to the Lady Gaga clip? No, no. I just show, we, I showed them the trailer, or the, I'm sorry, the poster for it that came out the other day. Did you hear the clip of her? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is it just going to be that through the whole thing? Probably. Yeah. Are we feeling like Lady Gaga is like Look, whispering into our ear? I just don't care um, because like, it was cool to watch the first one because the media didn't want you to watch it. Mm -hmm. And we're telling you that it was going to be, that it was yeah. going to be the start of an incel uprising. And I was like... <laughs> Hell yeah, Hell I'm gonna be a part go, of the insult uprising. <laughs> but now the media loves Joker because there's a girl boss who's in the front yeah. of the poster. Therefore, so. I don't care. If the no, media I mean, signs it's, off, I don't care. It's interesting, like, we'll watch it, obviously. We'll review it. It's uh, October 4th. Yeah. Comes out. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, here we go. Mary, you're going to have to explain to me who the hell Club Chalamet is. That's this woman here. Yes. Um, you're looking at a picture of a middle-aged black woman with reading glasses, and she runs one of the most notorious Timothy Chalamet stan accounts on Twitter. But she was just arrested outside of Timothy Chalamet's New York City apartment just on April 1st. Um, I think it's not a joke because this lady is crazy. I've seen her posts. Okay, what makes her crazy? I, I mean, I've just seen it's just that she's... It's all Chalamet she, all day? Like, I don't know if it's healthy to have a stan account in general, but if you're a middle-aged woman, um, that makes it even more weird. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I'm inclined to believe it's real. Mm-hmm. To be honest. It's even creepier that it's not some teenage girl and that this woman <laughs> looks like a well put together member of society. Well, it's the thing they, they are amongst you, right? right? You could be in any HR meeting where you got in trouble for saying something untoward in the office and it could be a stan sitting across from you telling oh, you shit. why you need to go see 
uh, are d- <laughs> why you're got, why you have to go see uh, like sensitivity trainers. Someone there said she should us. be in jail for that hairstyle alone. <laughs> Leave the lady alone. Hey, Make fun okay. of her for the standing, not for how she looks. By the way, Shakira. Uh, you guys talked about her mm-hmm. statements on Barbie her, yesterday. Her, her, uh, and remember what I said, guys? She, she had some rational, completely not insane take on Barbie. And I said, yeah. never worship a celebrity or their opinions because they're liable to let you down with whatever they say next. Enter this comment. And it's literally from the same interview. In- exactly. So Shakira says she didn't like Barbie in this interview. And in the same interview, she says this. Eve was a story created by misogynists to put women in the little box where we have to remain silent, not speak our minds, and not be a catalyst for change, to keep things as they are. I think there's something refreshing about women when they get to be themselves and be unapologetic, because we've had to apologize so many damn times in the past. Does anybody actually make women apologize for anything? And no, she. What? No, seriously. When was the last time a woman was asked to apologize for something? Um, Lizzo was asked to apologize. What? I did not I mean, see but that. Did she? I just saw people making fun of when her, she... saying like people thought she thought people were going to care that she quit music. No, when she, she when she made her um, dancers eat bananas out of okay. prostitutes' vaginas. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with feminism. I mean, I guess it, it was does. like a very roundabout apology. Feminism. But it's it's got nothing to do with like uh, like nobody nobody in the mainstream <laughs> is asking her to apologize for what she wears. Or being a or being a like an a feminist for being let me see um, being a catalyst for change. Ugh. No, no, you are celebrated at Mary, all times. Mary, you might know this better than me. Can you explain to me? Is this is this truly the story of Eve from Adam and Eve? Is she right? Well, that is okay. I didn't properly explain that. She's talking about obviously the biblical figure of Eve. Mm. Um, I. I really don't understand the connection that she's trying to make here with the story of Genesis and women being told to be silent or something like what. And like, what about <laughs> what about the role of men since like the beginning of time? I mean, the the box that they've put been put into is to be cannon fodder. I mean, Adam and was how literally... is that? That's not true because Hillary Clinton once told me that women were the true victims of war. I don't know if Shakira's ever read the Bible, but. Adam was literally held more accountable for original sin than Eve was. Mm -hmm. Because you remember, like, they didn't feel ashamed until Adam started being complicit Mm -hmm. in the sin. In the chat, he got blamed for her actions. The Bible says Adam can't blame Eve. Huh? Well, he tried. Yeah. He tried, though. Um, Typical man. (laughs) (laughs) But is that, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, intent of the author. It's not saying that Adam should have done that, mm. right? Is that what she's trying to say? And then the she title actually say anything. The title of this interview is Shakira's <laughs> She Wolf Feminism: A Master Class <laughs> on How to Transform Pain into World Domination. Well, actually, I can tell you, bitch, you're a pop singer. You're not going to you dominate the world. You're famous that, for she your did hips. that the smart way by not paying her taxes. Your hips. <laughs> you're shaking kidding. your hips and you're not, and you're evading taxes. Yeah. <laughs> No Which one thinks we're about to dominate here. the world. That's why we stand her here. We but we her. would have if she shut up. So no, there's I... me silencing <laughs> women again. No, I'm sorry, but two out of three. Mm. Means, so decent comment on Barbie. Doesn't pay her taxes. Crappy comments, comments on Adam and Eve. We still stand her. That's two out, yeah. of, two out of three ain't bad. Okay, we'll take it. Two out of three ain't bad. I hate the way that these celebrity interviews are written. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Am I the only one who reads these? Why? Because they know that no one maybe. reads them, right? Yes. But yeah. okay, it's just <laughs> the way that the journalist always does their own little like personal story yeah. of meeting the celebrity as well. They waited in the corner. Like literally, okay, this. <laughs> the security gate slides open and a Lamborghini Urus rolls into view. Mm. Out steps a petite doll-like figure. Sun-kissed curls whip around in the breeze. She approaches the window and stands, legs apart, Mm -hmm. facing me. Only she has no idea I'm on the other side of the mirrored glass, studying her as she studies herself. You do understand this is what what that writer wants to do for a living. She doesn't want to write about what Shakira thinks. She She wants wants to write a novel. This, yes. She removes the oversized black wrap sunglasses meant to shield her from the midday glare and perhaps, too, the intense scrutiny of the paparazzi who have taken renewed interest ever since her 2022 split from Spanish soccer, (laughs) soccer star Gerard Pique her partner of 11 years and the father of her two sons. Mm-hmm. 
That's just the way that all of these interviews are written. Uh, somebody uh, in the chat said J.K. Rowling was she asked to apologize. She looked down okay. into her matcha okay. latte, contemplating her existence. Like, I mean, <laughs> they're all written like that. I hate it. Lord Nero says J.K. Rowling was asked to apologize. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, obviously Shakira's not referring to women like J.K. Rowling. Correct. She's referring to herself. Mm-hmm. To, she, she would apply this logic to all pop stars, not somebody like J.K. Rowling who's pushing back against a political narrative. Can you sure. imagine Christina, like, Christina Aguilera saying that she was slut-shamed? Yes, I can imagine her saying that. But, like, okay, but, like, she said that, but that didn't happen. Like, we all remember... <laughs> Well, I don't remember. But we all remember that she was celebrated for the dirty era. I mean, right? but the problem is, is the, the, everyone those, loves that shit. Those everyone types of it. comments are unfalsifiable because there will always be one person on the internet that will say that. So therefore, it is in 2003, true. that person didn't have a platform they, to they say what have, they thought. They would have said it in a, they would have written to a magazine to say it, or they would have said it on a message board. Yeah. Message boards were around in 2003. Okay, okay fine. But it wasn't she, the dark ages. Christina Aguilera shouldn't have been scrolling on the forums that existed back then. <laughs> Wasting your time. She was. All right. Uh, Mini Driver says hard rain producers wouldn't let her wear a wetsuit under her shirt. They wanted to see my nipples. That's what she said. <laughs> Here's what her explanation They could have just was. done it in post. It set during this massive storm. There were huge rain machines. We shot crazy hours. It was tough. Everybody else could wear a wetsuit underneath their costume. And I was told by the producers that I couldn't because they wanted to see my nipples and that there was no point in having the wet t-shirt if you couldn't have what was underneath it. Who is this producer? I want to give him a raise. <laughs> He's she right. also said she pushed back on the request but was made to feel like, quote, an idiot and that she didn't understand that this is what's going on. I remember saying, this is wrong. I remember calling my agent and I remember it being like, boy, people wouldn't speak to me on the set. I was so punished for it. It was leaked to the press that I called and complained about conditions, but it was as if there was nothing to complain about and I was just complaining. It's this gaslighting, media gaslighting that's supported by the environment that you're in. Mm. So you turn on yourself and you're like, it's my fault for saying anything, you stupid big mouth. You should have shut up. Well, the movie was Whoa. called Hard Rain. <laughs> she, she sounds psychotic. Yeah, she sounds unhinged, like just unstable. I don't know if it's just it the is. way that it's transcribed from a video or a mm. podcast, but she sounds crazy. Um, and I maybe I'm just gaslighting her right what now. What is this but, movie about? I never saw it. I do like that. Okay. It just is says it like, a 1998 disaster movie. So I assume that it's set in a disaster. Okay. I um, just... Um, I, <laughs> There's going to be, there will be canon fodder stories like this for as long as, for as the existence of time of women with these types of stories. If you didn't want to do it, then just leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, then she might be breaking a contract and liable for, to pay it back. So, you know, is, she's not going to do okay, that. Okay. Is the nipples thing part of the contract? That it, makes it negotiable, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I mean, I think it's more about whether the producer and the director say that this is the scene we need and it's about, I can't have you wearing a wetsuit underneath because it wouldn't be realistic. Yeah. Well, everyone else would been wearing hard a wetsuit, right? to be fair. I mean, I, 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 if it were me in that position and I didn't have morals and I'm an actress in Hollywood, I would just say, well, no one gets to wear a wetsuit if I don't get to. <laughs> <laughs> make the, make it suffer, an equal playing field, yeah. right? Okay? <laughs> that makes sense. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> this story is absolutely bonkers. I, I, I put out a tweet earlier. I said, if you end up divorcing your husband or wife on a podcast for views and clout, you're probably a pretty bad person. And I said this because this is an actual story. Tori Spelling tells Dean McDermott she filed for divorce during her new podcast. Her new podcast, by the way, is called Miss Spelling. So it's a it's it's a play on uh, words, right? Uh, she's not a missus anymore. She's a miss, yep. even though she's in her 50s. <laughs> um, and the, also the cover photo for this podcast is just a picture of her completely naked. Yes. Um, photoshopped to all hell. Yep. And she is a mother of five, so she is involving her children in this drama. And I listened, unfortunately, to almost half of this episode. Not unfortunately. She's, just, she's like, I can't turn it off. She, I couldn't. It's like um, the audible version of what, like you can't look away from a train wreck. It yeah. was like that. But she was talking about how her 15-year-old daughter is like, 
mom, like people at school keep coming up to me and asking us about drama in, in the press about our family. And you're going to talk about your, your divorce on a podcast? Oh, gosh. Let's and she's go. like, it's already bad, sweetie. Let mommy get her clout. Like, oh, my goodness. She let's, does not care. Let's listen to this clip from the show. This is her actual phone call with her now ex-husband. That she used to launch her new podcast. Uh-huh. I'm okay. How are you? Okay. Oh, by the way, it's uh, you only hear one side of the conversation. She didn't I hate speaker. to do this to you while you're in the middle of you're going to work and everything. Um, they're they've done it. It's like one. It's just the formality. It's like a one sheet you check off, and next you'll have to sign it. You have a lawyer. Wait, it's going to be spun what way that I had enough of you? What? What do you mean? I mean, in all honesty, after this whole journey, I, if it's about that, like who files first, the other person's wrong, if they, I feel like I deserve to file first then. Well, I mean, you basically put it all out there with Daily Mail, like you said, everything that you've done to me over the years. So I think it would make perfect sense that it's followed up that I would file. Because those are things I would never have divulged to anybody and you did, so... I don't know. I'm, I I assume that'll come later. I don't. I think it's just yeah. It's just like a one sheet where you you literally like check like divorce and like irreconcilable differences. Let's go through the other side because he was he had his own words to say in there. You got the the transcript of it over there. Was it the we had the transcript of it? No, she didn't yeah. record him. No, I know, but the the okay, courts were you. there. Okay, so uh, basically what happened was is he was at work and says, uh, she says, I don't know what it feels like a punch in the stomach. Then down here, um, she basically says that he uh, agreed to do this because they had uh, separated a year prior. But here's the thing. You've got five kids. Don't do this for clout. I don't think that that's too much to ask. Am I, am I crazy here? Am I the bad person? I no, she's no, Tori clearly, Spelling she's is, clearly a narcissist. Yeah. yeah. Clearly. Never thought about anyone but herself. She then started crying after the end of the phone call to all of these people in the in the studio with her, saying, I've never felt so alone. Um, even though with all of these people around me, uh, I feel like I'm not uh, I'm not lovable. <laughs> like she yeah, was literally yeah. making it into a group therapy session for herself, and then she went into this diatribe about how she had such a hard upbringing, even though she is the nepo baby she's of all a, she's nepo Aaron babies. She's Spelling's daughter. She's Aaron Spelling's daughter. Okay, and grew up in literally a fifty-six thousand square foot home. <laughs> Um, and she was complaining about how she was raised with this expectation to represent her family name in a respectable, honorable way. Mm -hmm. Like she was expected to keep watch of what came, like what she said about her family or about herself, the, the way that she conducted herself publicly, as if that's a bad thing. Like as if it's a bad thing to want to reflect well on your family. Well, right? they don't like the idea of having that duty bound to put upon them. Like exactly. they, they don't like the idea that exactly. anyone would ever have a say on anything they do in their life. That's a huge problem in society right now. It's like people are uh, hesitant to admit that whether you like it or not, your behavior reflects that of other people. Mm -hmm. like, you have a community. You're not. You're not just an individual. And it would be nice. That's, but that's persisted just not how the world works. now yeah. to her, like the next generation, where her 15 year old daughter is like, "Hey, can you please not talk about your divorce, uh, your and dad's divorce, on your podcast? Mm -hmm. Because I'm literally going to get bullied for it <laughs> at my school because everyone in that." you know, obviously like gated community of Hollywood elites talks to each other and the parents talk and the students yeah. all know. Um, and she's like, I don't know, sweetie, it's my life and I do it whatever I want now because I'm a single lady. I miss spelling. I mean, this yeah, is why, the, why this have like five kids if you're going to be a totally if you're gonna be that selfish, selfish and selfish. narcissistic? Like, well, this is the same thing we see with the, the moms that do OnlyFans, right? They, they don't yes. think it should matter. They're like, well, you know, uh, the kids shouldn't bully my son or daughter because I do this. Exactly. Well, yes, no, they shouldn't, but that's <laughs> not the truth of the matter. That's right. not the way of the world. Literally, that was the... That was the objection when I said, you know, hey, if you have kids in the future, like on what on the whatever podcast, I said, hey, if you have kids in the future, 
um, they're going to get bullied because you did these things and it's on the internet forever. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, well, those kids just should be taught not to bully. And I was like, okay, so clearly you're the one saying that everyone else in society needs to change and that your behavior doesn't need to change. I'm not the one telling anyone that they need to change their attitudes about sex work. You are. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's clearly just this this selfish, egomaniacal behavior um, that is especially pronounced in celebrities, but it's really permeating throughout society at this point. Um, and r the reason for that is a lot of the time the influence of people like her. Uh, somebody pointed out, I think Middle Maga pointed out in the comments, like Destiny like went through his divorce on stream for... <laughs> For clout, and I, I didn't know that, or he like, did? or he went like they broke up on stream or something like that. Oh. Just, I didn't know. Just about never. That. Just don't yeah. do that. We got a twenty from Justin Seagraves. Mm -hmm. He said, "Just got out of the psych ward after some PTSD nonsense. Good to be out and listening to y'all again. Also, welcome back, Mary. Uh, hope you're all right, buddy. Yeah, hope and you're uh, okay. welcome back to the world. I hope that's not a joke. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to." Yeah. I just, I look at this stuff and it makes me unbelievably cynical to the world that someone, mm -hmm. like Mary's inability to turn this podcast off is the scariest part. It's like, Mary is the most- I <laughs> stare into the abyss. <laughs> Mary is the most rational person on earth, like re, is, is listening to this and is just seemingly enthralled. And I'm like, this is a slow motion car wreck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. And the kids are paying the price. I wouldn't want you to do this even if you were, even if you had no kids, because doing of it course. for cloud is insane. But like now imagine like you, like you get your podcast numbers back and they're not high enough. You're like, was my divorce not salacious enough for you? I mean, their marriage was salacious. Yeah. Let's like forget about the divorce. These were two married people who cheated on their spouses and got married yeah. afterwards. Yeah. So uh, clearly oh, they never they had together? they never had any respect for marriage as an institution or as a sacrament in the first place. It's what uh, Eddie Cibrian did with happen. Leanne Rimes. Eddie Cibrian was married to Brandy Glanville. Like, how do you not... Has that ever worked out, though? No. Like, where the, still, the new relationship and, actually lasts? Him and Leanne Rimes are still together. So okay. that's going on. I mean, not nearly as long as I, I think. I, I just, I only know this because I've been watching Third Watch and Eddie Cibrian is in Third Watch. So I was like looking through what he's been doing lately as mm -hmm. far as movies and television. And they've been together like 11 years or something like that. But you know. Well, yeah. Tori Spelling was married 18. for 18 yep. years. Dang. So it's not, not necessarily going to work out yep. permanently. And I mean, I just think that you should see it as a red flag in yourself and your spouse if you both cheated when you first got together. That's a horrible sign. Yeah. Um, and she was just, she was just acting like such a victim about it. She was like, I've just been like telling myself for years that like I I needed to leave him. I needed to get away from what he was doing to me. One of my favorite gags they ever did was in in Scream One when they're talking about like, oh, what if this all got made into a movie? It was part of the meta humor of it. And they were talking about who would play Sydney, and Dewey's like, "Oh, I see you as a young Meg Ryan myself." And Sydney goes, "Thanks, but with my luck, they'll cast Tori Spelling." <laughs> and then in the sequel to Scream, in Scream Two, where in this movie now a a movie that's been made about what happened to Sydney exists called Stab, and they're doing cast interviews with the people who played them their characters in Stab, and Tori Spelling plays Sydney. Oh, that's in, funny. That's funny. In Scream Two. Look, so. everyone knew that Tori Spelling was a bad actress and not good looking. That's just a fact. Allegedly, Ruckus says he wanted her to leave too. Trust. I'm sure he did. It didn't sound like he was waiting for the marriage to work uh, out either. I'm saying, but for the sake of the kids, don't turn the divorce into <laughs> cannon fodder. Thank for the you. Internet. And then dance. I think <laughs> she sounded offended after the phone call that he was being so cordial and professional about it. Because he, he's at work. He's like. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, well, oh yeah. What time do I have to sign the, the forms? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then and she totally dropped they him by ended, calling him at work. They ended the phone call with "I love you." That's so weird. I mean, she, did he say it back? It's I don't know. It's still ingrained she... in them. I'm sure it's still ingrained in them. That's just so sad. Like divorce is so sad. Yep. So sad, and and it's really like there's no respect for that. There's no like reverence for for marriage anymore. Yeah. And she's probably like gonna talk about all the details as it's going on too. I mean, the, just, just this good is like a grown woman. How old is she? 
She's 50 gotta be something. In her 50s now. This is a woman in her 50s divorcing her husband of 18 years with whom she has five kids, giving it the same attitude as a 16 year old girl going through her first high school breakup. Like, literally. Mm -hmm. I, like, I just don't, I don't have sympathy for that behavior, especially not publicizing it that way and making your kids go through the fallout. Personally, I'm, I think it's all Eve's fault. That's what Shakira was saying, right? <laughs> it's all Eve's fault. Yeah. Exactly. All right. What would you guys like to see? Um, cringe or cute of the day? The cringe is really bad, so I'm excited for you guys to see it. But <sighs> All right. Let's do cringe then. Cringe? All right. We'll start with cringe first then. Mary showed me this one. You didn't watch it, right? I have not watched okay. it. Here we go. This is Bella Thorne on Bill Maher. <laughs> Thorne. It doesn't, even, it doesn't even matter because everybody's switching their sexes. Constantly. No, I'm not kidding about it. I mean, I'm kidding about that. But people do switch sexes a lot more than they used to. You know, there's a lot of trends. You know, I always see that in the paper about somebody who has switched their sex, which I'm all, if that's what makes you, yes. that's that what blows your dress Bad up? Bad bitches all the way. Who? Yes. <laughs> Bad bitches. Fat bitches. Why bad are bitches. Oh, bad bitches. Bad bitches. Be who you are. Yes, claps. Right. Claps. Makes me happy. I mean, I think there's some uh, money to be made in some sort of exchange with everyone switching where, like, you know, if you need a penis, take a penis. If you have a <laughs> penis, give a penis. You know, like, if there was some exchange, uh, maybe Bitcoin could be involved. <laughs> oh, you could, you know... <laughs> No? Or it doesn't even, is just it doesn't even sitting matter there because high out of her mind and she's like oh. what? So this is this is why this is why um Steve O couldn't get Bill Maher to agree to do the show without getting high because yeah. Bill Maher doesn't know how to do He's it without so getting lame. high now. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what happens. You know, he clearly were, okay, so he clearly had a crush on, on Bella Thorne. What Take were a penny, your, leave a penny. What were your thoughts on that? So you had some interesting thoughts on that. So yesterday we talked about it. If you guys don't know, mm -hmm. Steve-O basically got, had the opportunity to go on Bill Maher. And he said, like, look, I've been sober for 16 years. Would it be possible to do this without smoking mm -hmm. weed? And Bill Maher said no. Oh, yeah. Um, because Bill Maher, yeah. characteristically, he's an a-hole. Yes. Um. But like, I was interested to hear what you thought about it because obviously, you know, you're sober, yeah. so you would understand more what it's like to be around people who are doing substances of different kinds. But like, it's so like Stevo, he like, I, I looked at some of his posts about like reaching 16 years and everything like that, and it just came off to me like he is very attached to sobriety as like part of his identity or it, it maybe his whole way. identity, which mm. is a huge problem. Like it makes it seem like it's more precarious if your entire identity is about I don't do this anymore. You it, know, it shouldn't it shouldn't manifest your whole identity. That would be kind of similar to what they call being on a dry drunk or a dry high. Whereas like the, the people who go to meetings three times a day to stay sober, that's, you're not living a balanced, well-rounded mm -hmm. life. But there's also such a thing as people who turn the negativity that their obsessive tendencies had that led them towards addiction and move it into a positive sphere, which is to mm -hmm. be outwardly, uh, willing to discuss these issues. Now, right. he's also like a front-facing personality. So what you're seeing is the media side of him and yeah. it's a big part of who he is and that's fine. On a, on, for the most part, when I look at this, I say I would have liked for Bill Maher to be like, look, I really wanted to hear your opinions on some things and uh, because of, uh, because, and then point out, say, look, you worked really hard for 16 years to get sober, so together we're going to do this without smoking today. I think that would have been perfectly fine. But also, I don't think he needed to leak that Bill Maher said no. He didn't need to publicize it. Like, I don't think but he needed to say like, no, but I think, I think Bill Maher is kind of a douche for I not doing it. I saw Bill Maher um, had Candace Owens on, yes. what is it called? I don't even know what the name of his, like, it's, his, um, his podcast is. Club, Club Random. Club Random, Random is yeah. what it's called. He had okay. Candace Owens on it, um, like, months ago when she was, like, heavily pregnant. And he was smoking. <laughs> Not good for the baby. So much. So much smoke just blowing it in, right, basically in her face. Like, he, w I don't know if he intended to do that or if he even thought about it first. At the if you look at the wide shot, they're in close proximity. Yeah, so. it was literally like that. And he was smoking like that with, like, eight months pregnant woman sitting across from him. And she didn't say anything, obviously. But he did, like, 
make weird so comments like about how like we shouldn't be reproducing a bunch because of the climate yeah or whatever like you clearly have so you feel some type of way i think my, about my nature, someone being pregnant why is he trying to be cool yes he's Please not stop. cool he's my not. nature for this cool. is like if bill Ma if i was steve-o and bill maher said this to me i would just say eh, whatever and i would move on with my day right but it's also like who really cares it's it's one of many appearances that Steve-O will do, move on and talk about the yeah. things that you want to talk about. Plus, if Steve-O wants to talk about, if what comes up has something to do with being sober, it would be weird for him to be doing it with a dude who's smoking in close proximity because he could end up catching like a contact high mm. from doing that. How much of that is like actually a it's, thing? It's, yes, it's a thing. It's absolutely a thing. There's a reason you hotbox cars. Um, right, not, that us life know, not, not that I would know anything about that. Um, so, like, you, for instance, you would not, you know, if you were invited on Club Random, you would not do it. I would probably, I mean, yeah, I'd probably avoid it. Yeah. But I, I mean, I don't, are a thing, so I I don't know if I would do it because I don't like the smell. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I just, I wouldn't really think about it. To but me, it's, it's weird because, like, I've been around people smoking weed and... And not smoking it, and I feel literally nothing. I mean, so. he's literally I sitting face varies. to face with yeah, her. Yeah, they're like in a room. In face to face, the ventilation is different in a place like that because yeah. of air, because of the studio lights, and everything like that. Not to get technical. Yeah, but. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't <laughs> the airflow. It wouldn't bother me, but also I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't big into weed, but I, I. I guess I wouldn't have even thought. It's probably the type of thing where I might have ended up in that situation and not even thought about what could happen. With yeah. like contact high or something like that. But Probably for Steve O, he wasn't saying that because of contact high. He was saying he yeah. just doesn't want to be like, around, around. around. He yeah. doesn't want to see and it. Which after 16 years, you would think he's comfortable with it. I mean, that's, it's better. That's what I'm yeah, saying. but the thing is, it's better like, not to risk it. Yeah, no, better I not, agree. Better not to and risk it. And also, you're literally on camera, yeah. so. But, uh, you know, more th pressure. that's the whole premise of the show. So why are you surprised that he said he wouldn't not. Yeah. Is that the entire premise of the show? Is that just I, I, Bill Maher I getting high? I didn't even know this show existed until I saw that. Is this, this is the like worst the thing ever. Why? <laughs> I just thought this was so cringe because he's clearly just like trying to impress Bella Thorne because <laughs> he thinks she's hot. She's like, I came on here for the free weed. Like, yeah, basically. We <laughs> it's weird. Being around people doing stuff like that wouldn't bother me. It's more. It's usually more in context to movies and television. I can't watch Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for, Requiem for a Dream fucks me up. Like... It's too I don't depressing. Yeah, it's I've never watched that movie. The hopelessness of the either. movie it's so is dark. what the hopelessness of the movie is what affects me, not mm. the the images of them doing so. Though I did have a very vivid dream recently about a relapse, like which I oh happens gosh. every so often. Uh -huh. I'll have a like a vivid dream related to drug use, but it, it as the years go on, it happens increasingly less. We got a uh -huh. twenty from that stands fantastic. He said. Since Mr. B is gone and you are getting rid of that of that coffee, are we replacing with another pumpkin spice? I hope so. It is one of my fave coffee flavors. Also, happy... N wait, is this Nerus? Yeah. Coffee Nerus. lady. Also, hi. Also, also, hi, Bert and Marty. You're Marty, I guess. Too. Bert and Marty. Okay. I like that. <laughs> What's Nerus? Marty McFly. Um, so... Nerus. Okay, yeah, pumpkin spice is going away. I don't know if or what we're gonna replace it with. Um, maybe we'll do something seasonal, seasonal again, but that's to be determined. And happy Norus, thank you. Wait, what is that? Uh, that means Persian New Year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go and look at cute of the day. Anything's better than watching Bill Maher hang out with Bella, uh, Bella Thorne. <laughs> Uh, here we go. This is from Mistress D. Oh. Says, meet Bella. Another Bella. Wait. Found her abandoned under the deck. She's very sweet, super smart, oh. and a little stinky. I'd take, her, uh, I'd take out her stink glands a in a skunk? month, and then she can join the other animals, but she's already using the litter what? box. What? You have a skunk in your house? You can do I that? I could never. Yeah. You can remove their glands? But he said that he is not, has not yet done that. So she, it looks like. Or yes, she. she has not yet done that. Um, she has not yet done that. Maybe so... she works with pets. Is this just a thing you do? Dude, that is so cute, though. It's cute, but like, it's a no from me. Like, I'm not... <laughs> Mistress D's Twitter bio says, big on defenestration, bigger on animals. Maybe she works with animals for a living. Okay, okay, okay work. Let's do one more. <laughs> so cute. This one here is from Sabine uh, Figaro. Brett addendum, before and after his spa day. Every summer I take the yard rake to the carpet after this guy. Aww. Oh, <laughs> so floofy. Is that a golden that retriever? That's extreme floof. Yeah. Very floofy. Very. I like it. <laughs> oh, it looks so happy. Okay. 
All right, guys, uh, let's go ahead and get started then, shall we? Mary, tell me what the hell is going on with Kanye. Okay, a former employee of Yeezy and Donda Academy is filing a lawsuit against Kanye West for workplace harassment and abuse. And the allegations are absolutely wild, and I'm sorry, but they're hilarious, and I don't feel bad for this guy, even a smidgen. So <laughs> here are the claims of workplace abuse in summary. This employee claims that Ye threatened him by saying, I'm going to punch you in the face before abruptly changing tone, mimicking Super Mario's victory dance <laughs> and saying, I'm going to give you one more chance, another life. So that was that was just one claim. He continued, Ye went on a rant about Hitler's greatness, said the Holocaust was fake, and then had staff members come to the meeting room and watch the Batman on mute in silence. So the Matt Reeves Batman, the new no, Batman. No, the oh yeah, yeah 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 the Matt Not, Reeves Batman. Yeah. On mute, though. That's important. In silence. Um, well, that movie's all either. about noir Look, and tone, okay? This is so. all stuff He's just that an artist, guys. All of this He's allegedly took artist. place after Kanye's death con on Jewish people tweet came out. And after he was dropped by Gap. After he was dropped by Adidas. So this guy decided to work for Kanye after Kanye's cancellation. Just to be clear on the timing. So I don't know why any of this would surprise him yep. since this is what he was publicly doing at the time. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read straight from the Rolling Stone report here. So a former Yeezy and Donna Academy employee claims Kanye West wanted to install a jail at his school to cage students, threatened to punch him during a temper tantrum, and gave preferential treatment to white employees, according to a so new he's lawsuit. So like, he went to the southern border and was like, kids in cages, let's go. <laughs> this guy's name is Trevor Phillips, and he filed this lawsuit on Tuesday in Los Angeles, joining a number of former employees who are suing Kanye. It gives behind the scenes look at what Phillips says it's like to work for Kanye, including spontaneous firings, a late night summons to Nobu, watching the Batman on mute and awkwardly navigating Ye pretending to masturbate. A rep for Kanye did not immediately reply to request for comment. It kind of makes me think of like, what was it he, he, made, he showed porn to the people from Adidas? Same, same Adidas. thing, yeah. yeah. Um, which if that happened in the company of children, obviously that's abhorrent, but I don't, I think that's in this lawsuit from the start of his nine month employment with Kanye in November, 2022, Trevor Phillips, who is black says it was immediately apparent that Ye treated black staff considerably worse than white employees. He would scream and berate black employees while never even as much as raising his tone at the white staff. Thoughts? So that's... That's interesting. Uh, coming on board weeks after Ye's fallout with Adidas and Gap over anti-Semitic remarks, Trevor Phillips claims that Ye continued to double down and make similar statements throughout his employment. Who could have seen that coming? Yeah, it's shocking. <laughs> that is absolutely shocking. Imagine my shock. So this guy decided to work for Kanye after Kanye was canceled. And he thinks that he has the moral high ground to claim that he's a victim of racism. What the now. hell did he teach at the Donda Academy? That's what I want to know. You went to go. I mean, I'm not saying I, that I think Kanye is an anti-Semite, but you went to go work for the guy who is now public en enemy number one. And mm -hmm. he is now being branded an anti-Semite. And you are surprised that he <laughs> is saying racist stuff. <laughs> and doing weird and things. And you feel offended yeah. by that. Like, really? I just don't feel bad for I mean, you. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe when it happened, he thought, "Oh, it's like I'm gonna be. It's gonna be edgy. I'm gonna go work with this guy who's against the system." You'll definitely then, come back with a lot of stories. Yeah, yeah, at the very least, you'll be fun at parties for the yeah. next couple of years because you'll have all sorts of <laughs> tales to tell. Uh, Ye also threatened to go after LGBTQ communities next, according to the suit, because quote. Gay people are controlled by Bill Gates so that they don't have children for population control. How does he control them? Is it all those? Is it all that farm? Is it in the? Is it in the GMOs in the farmland? Bill Gates. And, yeah, like. Oh how, well, I mean, how Bill, is he controlling them? Bill Gates' whole like overpopulation mm -hmm. scheme is definitely like known. I don't know if gay but people he, have anything to do with it. But how is he but, controlling the gay people? I need to know. Um. With 5G. Specifically. Uh, with 5G. There that makes sense. The 5G towers. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> Some of Ye's, quote, dangerous rhetoric was repeated in front of Donda Academy students. Ye allegedly once told two children that he wanted them to shave their heads and that he intended to put a jail in the school and that they could be locked in cages. So I wonder what they were doing. They probably tried to use silverware. Um, <laughs> because when we talked about Donda Academy... Yep, I forgot about that. They were not allowed to use silverware Eat during lunch. Hands. And they only were allowed to eat sushi for lunch. Yep. Nothing else. Oh, that's kind of rad. Somebody brought in a too. cheeseburger Who and he was like, to the cage with you, child. Into he, the cage. And he did that. He goes, Shave his head. Uh, <laughs> no, he has like a tr he has a button like Doctor Evil. Just send them down to the dungeon. Yeah, it's, uh, it's he got the idea from the southern border. You know, uh -huh. kids in cages. I feel like this is taken out of context because you don't eat sushi with utensils, right? But you have chopsticks, but they they weren't even allowed to have those. Well, was that ever confirmed? Yeah. Was, was it, it just was it no silverware or was it no eating utensils? This is how the media manipulates you guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, they also didn't buy my book. They didn't have desks. They had to sit on like pillows on the floor. I think. I mean, um, very it, boho. What if he got them standing desks? Standing desks are the rage. Better for your back. It's unschooling. That's yeah. what they call mm -hmm. it now, unschooling. Okay, when Trevor Phillips tried to push back against Ye's bigotry, he responded mercilessly with incessant harassment, humiliation, and attempts to both mentally control and destroy Phillips. Kanye's ill will towards the plaintiff ultimately culminated in a vulgar lashing in front of the school children and their parents. Kanye even threatened Trevor Phillips with physical violence. I think that was the, the Mario victory dance thing where he said he was going to punch him in the face. Yep. Um, I'm picturing the Mario, <laughs> the Mario theme song being played in the background as he's doing it. While spending time at Donda Academy, Phillips claims that Ye began spreading anti-Semitism in school meetings. <gasps> so you went surprise to, Pikachu face. So you went to work for the guy who made the death the death con hmm. tweet, and then were shocked when anti-Semitism showed up. That's crazy. Shocking. Um, okay. Including in front of some students, other inappropriate commentary allegedly included Ye saying he only likes to date white women and telling employees that no one could be fat, otherwise they'd be fired. Based. <laughs> that's based. He cares. To the fat part, that's pretty based. Yeah. He he's is showing that he cares about his employees' health. I don't see anything wrong with that. He's like, look, I wanna he's like, you know what it is? I wanna pay you for a long, long time. I want to have to to contribute to your pension, and the only way to do that is to keep you from becoming a fat tub of lard. This is why Tim uh, offers us free workout classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually Which, true. To be fair, are always going on while we're live. So he yes. doesn't like us, but yeah. <laughs> we can be fat tons like of Everything lard. is always planned right when PCC is It going really on. is. He's like, like big, Christmas big party. food order, 3 p.m. <laughs> Interesting. 3 to 4 isn't 59. It? I think, it's, I think he's <laughs> just trying to get, get us to quit. He's like, he wants to prove that he's like, oh, can they take the heat? Will they right, work the under these conditions? And I'm over here like, no free food today. I can't work like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this says, in December 2022, Phillips says Ye requested they meet at Nobu Hotel in Malibu to discuss business plans. Over the next three hours, Phillips describes feeling uncomfortable as Ye went on a rant about Hitler's greatness, said the Holocaust was fake, and said gay people are not true Christians. At some point, Phillips says Ye had hotel staff come to the room and put on the Batman with the two men watching the movie on mute in silence. Wait, so <laughs> Wait, how many times? I, I, so the <laughs> idea is like he, they play it and then he immediately hits the mute button and it's they like don't this. do it. Like what that should be is it should be a test where it's like, how long can you watch this without like checking your phone? Yeah, that is actually a good test of attention span, isn't yeah. it? I would fail. I mean, it's already boring seconds. with the sound on. I would fail in like <laughs> 10 seconds with most movies. Okay, so this is this is where it gets really weird. He said, okay, there, picture these two men. Okay, yay, and this employee of his. They're alone in a hotel room sitting on the bed. Um, and then they started lying flat on the bed. Phillips claims that Ye began to make slow up and down motions with his hand just above his genitals. Uh, the orca boss in the chat has said something very, very honestly prophetic. He says, this sounds like it's made up. 
And it does. It does. This whole thing sounds very fake to me. But at the same time, it's it, yay. Exactly. So I'm like, I don't know. Well, that's that's why though. Like they get it's so easy, easy to lie about yes, they're, him. They're pointing out that Trevor Phillips him. is the character in GTA Five. But it sounds just as crazy as all the things that were in Julia Fox's memoir about Kanye, right? Kind of sounds like this game where you go work for this guy, you make up a story about him, you take out a fat lawsuit against him, and people don't know if it's real or not because it's Kanye. He so. trusts too many people. My favorite, he does. He's way too trusting. The yeah. other day, the the clip of him talking about Lady Gaga came up again, and I watched it like 15 <laughs> times. She's like, I like Gaga. What the hell does she know about cameras? He made a valid point. <laughs> he did. While lying flat on the bed, he claims that Ye began to make slow up and down motions with his hand just above his genitals as though he was masturbating, and he began talking about his sex life, according to the lawsuit. Kanye then FaceTimed a woman and instructed her to wear lingerie and shoes he bought for her. Phillips immediately recognized the female's name because only a few weeks earlier, while at the Yeezy headquarters, Kanye flaunted nude pictures of her to many of the Yeezy staff members. He, <laughs> he claims his relationship with Ye soured by May 2023 after a series of misunderstandings. Ye threw a temper tantrum and threatened to punch him. He was apparently unhappy with a garden that Phillips was tending to. Because if you don't know, okay, like Kanye's whole plan for Donda Academy included making um, some kind of new age living community with, okay. you remember this, right? Like huts. He yes. had like these oh, models. Oh, yeah, for, yes, okay. For huts, I and they were going to become self-sufficient, and they were going to start farming, and it was basically going to be like a yay commune. Mm -hmm. And he, he, this employee the was hired man. to like plant cotton. I'm, not, I'm serious, like... Bad look, by the way, that this employee was black, but yeah. he was meant to plant like cotton and make gardens and like renovate buildings and stuff. And Ye didn't like his garden. Mm. <laughs> so Probably that's not an easy guy to please. He began yeah. screaming in front of a crowd for Phillips to, quote, get the F out of here and that he was effing fired. Later, as he pleaded his case with Ye, explaining his daughter and little brother both attended Donda Academy and that he was in the midst of an undiagnosed medical condition, Ye allegedly began another tirade. Kanye raised his hand and pointed at Philip's neck condition and screamed, F your neck! <laughs> then pointing at the school, Kanye belched and F your daughter. I don't give an F about none of that. Kanye then ran to the gardens and attempted to pick up and toss the garden, but too weak and out of shape, failed to pick them up. Instead, he started pulling out the plants and individual pieces inside the boxes, ripping them apart, throwing them on the floor in a worse and more immature temper tantrum than any of even the youngest Donda school children had ever thrown. I guess this, like, the, the, the moral of the story is, like, this would have been shocking if it was literally anyone else. <laughs> but because it's Kanye, it's not really shocking because right. it's just kind of baseline behavior Yeah, it's for like him. manic episode or just yay every day. Like an average... <laughs> Day. So I guess that wasn't officially the day he was fired because the next day he was tasked with checking out a farm property that Ye wanted to buy, but Ye fired him again you because he was, quote, not on the level. <laughs> you know what we need to do? We need to see if we can get like a reality sh show where Kanye tries to become a Scientologist and see Scientology and Kanye just come crashing together. That would be beautiful. Would I think he could happen, actually no. single-handedly collapse Scientology. I think he could. I think he could. Because they would be afraid of him. Right. I love Tom He's, I mean, Cruise. What the hell does he know about religion? Yeah, Tom Cruise would be quaking. Yeah. Honestly, or Kanye would become the most charismatic and influential Scientologist he, ever. He takes over and, and ends up making it even It could go religion. one of two ways. Yes. He either makes or breaks Scientology if he joined. Like, but that's Hopefully that I mean. won't happen. Um, he's so this this plaintiff is seeking thirty five thousand dollars for it? discrimination. That's it. So that's it. Thirty five. That inclines me to believe that actually he's credible. No, nah, I should be asking for way more. If he were number. just being a gold digger, like wouldn't he be seeking more? Why I mean, that the idea amount? would the idea would be to ask for more and then hopefully settle out of court for less. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, doesn't play that. 
I just, I, I, we need a reality show. It's just Kanye verse. And then we just drop Kanye into random situations with random groups and see what happens. I just, I, I feel bad for all the people involved if this is all true. It would be uh, interesting to see if they would let like a, like a Tim Cast writer shadow in, in a week at Don Academy. They literally did. No, that mean, literally not happened. Shane. Not, <laughs> yeah, not that Shane. I'm saying that it's somebody like in like one of the mm -hmm. at the school only. Well, the the school's like already enrolled in the school. Is, I know it's not school there. already shut down. I, I don't know. know what he has going on right now, other than just like doing pap walks with yeah. Bianca and you know dressing her in loincloths. <laughs> Like, what is he doing exactly? They're always like, he's going on business meetings. Like, business meetings for what? He's not... I don't know. He, like, I don't know, but they're just, big and important. Yeah. He and just dropped an album, right? Didn't he just drop an album? He dropped the album, yes. They're big and important and businessy, and that's what he's got to do. He's got to do business things at business meetings. Yeah. I just think you. this is seriously better than satire. It's better than anything you could make up. Yep. Reality is funnier. All right, let's go to some super chats then. Okay, Nicholas Wilson sent a dollar without a message. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. Shane H. Wilder said, Happy Woman Wednesday, Brett, Mary, and Sarah. Mary, we miss you. Things went off the rails. Brett tried to end the show. Phil wanted to pick a fight with you, and Bertman tried to blow out Brett's ear. He did. Okay, things didn't go off the rails, but Bertman <laughs> did literally, like, yell with laughter into the head into the microphone and nearly make my one good ear that works not work anymore i watched the <laughs> clip and it didn't seem like it was that loud it was uh in in studio it was very loud it was very loud in the headphones well can you do an imitation of it no what, what no. was so funny I, I, it was it I was don't... phil saying that he wants to fight me yes oh. which you know which i heard we could see weird we'd have weird. to we'd have to see weird. that fight go on let's do two um, more Obviously, I'm not going to say that I could win a fight against Phil. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and... Are you allowed weapons? Well, if I had a gun and he's, like, far <laughs> enough away... Yeah. I'm not going to start, like, talking about this on YouTube. <laughs> chill, chill. Andrew Jacobs said, Mary, more uncontrollable laughing fits, please. Well, you guys are going to have to be funny for that to happen. Oof. So make me laugh. Yeah, make or you're laugh. not going to get any of those anytime soon. Tacti Platy said, welcome back, Mary. You were missed. Did you get married? Mm -hmm. Why is that your first assumption? I was. You she saw, misses you a them, She misses a Monday, so therefore <laughs> she got married. Just okay. Did you tell them I was sick? Uh, I believe I said you were feeling under the weather. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was like dying. I, however, did not take responsibility for it possibly being my fault for coming back to work too quickly last week because mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling well on Sunday or Monday, and then yeah. came back to work on Tuesday. So Mary wasn't feeling well, and then I wasn't feeling well. It's a then, chain you know, reaction. We're not pointing any fingers. It's really but my fault. So. Not pointing any, any fingers, fingers in but any particular direction. That's just rude. I think someone might know where that came from. It's not my fault. All right, Mary, you're gonna have to tell everybody what the hell's going on with Lizzo because you were not here for yeah. her uh, announcement that she was retiring. Yeah, you guys might have heard earlier this week that Lizzo was planning to quit her music career entirely because she was just so tired of the toxicity and fat shaming. Um, and it wasn't an April Fool's joke because it came but, out before April Fool's. Yes, um, but obviously that was a lie. Mm -hmm. So that was a lie. Um, she backpedaled in the most pathetic way possible. This was clearly a PR stunt. Um, just let's revisit, though, what her statement said yep. in the beginning. She said, I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the Internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, but being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look. My character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit. Wait, peace sign emoji, peace, um, deuces. So everyone thought this is great news. Lizzo's she's never coming back to the public eye. Like we don't have to deal with this woman anymore. This was a story, however, right? When I said before, I said this is giving Doja Cat. Well, she did do this thing uh, back in 2022 yeah. where she she basically would just get into Twitter fights with fans and then like quit music. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And she's in trouble again like two months ago for wearing Lizzo a Sam Hyde like, shirt. Lizzo is like mad that people wanted her to explain why she was trying to force her backup dancers to eat bananas out of prostitutes' vaginas. And she was like, y'all are disrespecting my name. <laughs> And uh, like huh? she tried to, she tried to have that lawsuit thrown out recently. It was not 
So that's still pending. That's still pending. Oh, oh wow. yep. I'm excited to see what happens with that. She's actually. like, look, if uh, if having your workers eat bananas out of the vaginas of prostitutes is wrong. I don't want to be uh, right. Be right. Um, <laughs> and then also her choreographer was like weird about bananas. She also, was like, who, who is she to call out fat she, shaming? She fat shames her own. Employees. Do you remember this? She, her choreographer for um, the big girls. What was the show called? It was like Lizzo's big girls, like, like Lizzo's R's. big girls or something like with like yeah. three R's rather the than the choreographer an R. had this weird fixation with bananas. And she was like mimicking blowjobs on bananas and called it a party trick. Uh -huh. So they were all just like weird about bananas. They were <laughs> yes, it was a lot. Don't so, eat bananas around Lizzo or her people. Lizzo basically. just Lizzo just thinks she's above criticism and she doesn't need to answer for any of this. It's all lies. This is this total is the gaslighting. This is yeah. the problem with identity politics. When you when you make your bones based on identity, uh, you suddenly feel that you're above criticism. Look at what's going on with the. Uh, we were talking about the J.K. Rowling hate, like the the lawsuit over. Or I'm sorry, the the potential um, <laughs> arrest over hate speech and protected groups well just because you're a protected group doesn't mean that you're above criticism you're a celebrity you're going to be you're going to be insulted you're going to oh. be made fun of and you're going to be held to account for your supposedly allegedly shitty behavior to employees you could say that lizzo felt the crushing weight yes of the public opinion around yep. her um so she has now posted a video clarifying what she meant with that statement that she was quitting. She's not quitting. She was so, never um, to quit. Here trigger warning. Trigger warning for what you're about to see, by yeah, the way. Sorry about the image, guys. I can't, unfortunately, I, I can't do anything about it. <sighs> That's just crazy. I'm really? sorry. Like, we're just going to sit here and acknowledge, first of all, this, th I don't like what I'm looking at here. Looks like a dick between the titties. Sorry. <laughs> this, like, no one wow, told her no, this I was a bad idea. <laughs> Want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit, I mean I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive. If I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win. There's something so unbelievably self-absorbed about the average celebrity that does these things. Let's so, hear her out. So for the sake of helping another person, you're helping no one except for fast food companies. I want to hear her out. Then I've done even more than I could have hoped for. With that being said, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep being me. Once again, I just want to say moving thank you. Moving forward very slowly. The love that I've received. Lunging <laughs> forward. Means more than you know. Okay. So. It's always so self-indulgent. What did we learn? <laughs> it's always so self-indulgent to say, like, I don't do this for me. I do this so that I can inspire the peons to rise up and believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. You do it for yourself. And that's fine. Like, <laughs> I would love for these people, like, I do it because I like being yeah. famous and I no. like the adulation. Lizzo right. is like, I don't have a pop music career so that I can get rich and famous. I have a pop music career so that I can convince other fat women who aren't nearly as rich or famous as me that it's okay to be fat. Yep. When actually, I feel like being rich and famous Someone is her only though. consolation um, for being fat. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just, I can't take the self-absorption to, to act as if your job uh, mm -hmm. of making music is done for the, the good of other people. Like, I just hate that she acts like her brand has ever been anything but her body. Yes. And how large she is. I mean, your Instagram handle is literally Lizzo be eating. <laughs> Come on now. I probably just um, reflecting back everything that you guys said when you initially covered this. But well, yeah, my, my um, point was like, look, you don't get to escape the criticism when you inherently tie, you know, divisive topics like identity politics to your brand. Mm -hmm. We don't get away from it. Like, 
other fat singers um like adele or kelly clarkson um or just even people who've like fluctuated in their weight i mean even like megan trainer right she was like trying to brand herself as plus size mm -hmm. i don't like that but they never did queen latifah ever brand herself as fat or was she just queen nope. latifah no like there that. were like, so Aretha many franklin and like, queen latifah was great of... So many singers. singers that are overweight that literally no one cares that they're right. overweight. No one brings it up. Almost no one. Whatever. Um, they don't make it their brand because they're relying on their talent. I just don't understand why Lizzo can't do the same, especially because she does have talent. Uh, because she just came up at this perfect time and place yes. for woke DEI executives to be like, ooh, this is money bags, mm. like, and use her as an avatar for mediocrity. To be uh, fair, to sell like, the masses. When you go to Target now and you look at the pictures they have up in the clothing sections, it's it's somehow just as bad or worse in yeah. a lot of respects. So I it's just, almost like as telling like, you, like, you look like this, don't you? <laughs> it's like condescending almost. Um, you you want to see other fat people like you fatty, don't you? Well, it's I mean, like that. That's, that's what like saying. no. Like I don't I don't want to see that. Even if I were fat, I wouldn't want to see that. I still wouldn't want to see that. Do you think that that's Do you think that that's true of the average uninitiated woman who doesn't pay attention to the culture war? Do they go there? Do they blubber into Target and say, "I want to see a woman who looks just like me"? Do the fat men go in there and say, "I want to see pictures up on the on the wall Dude, of guys right. who are fat"? I like, still don't understand it. Like, are attracted to the psychology yeah. of like people who are fat. I think they don't know that they're fat. I think they really don't know. Or they're like in the most extreme denial that you've ever seen in your life. Because mm -hmm. I, um, I recently watched this documentary uh, or like a docu series that Katie Hopkins made for TLC, I think, um, in the UK, where she she was like known for making all these fat phobic comments and getting everyone mad at her because she was like. Uh, I wouldn't hire a fat person because I know that they're lazier. So if I had two candidates and one of them is fat and one of them is thin, I'm going to hire a thin person. Everyone was so mad at this lady and she decided to actually become fat on purpose. Huh. She gained like 60 pounds in three months on wow. purpose by eating like 8,000 calories a day. It must have been hell on her knees. And it, Yeah, she was like going to the doctor and they were like doing all the diagnostic criteria and then she decided to lose the weight in the same three month period of time to show that you can lose the weight by just exercising and eating less huh. and completely like proved everyone wrong middle fingers up to everyone who said that that's a myth um that being fat is a choice and also did so lovingly with no hate or ill will in her heart <laughs> and i think it's just like curtains after that she's yep. a hero <laughs> I just, the, these types of marketing, marketing will not go away now because it's too lucrative for them. She has her own active wear line or like clothing line and stuff like that. There's too many ways that they can monetize this type of thing. And America's not getting Wait. thinner, it's getting fatter. Lizzo has her own active wear line? She's got her own like Skims type brand, yeah. Yeah, she does, huh? I forgot yeah. about that. Active Liz wear to sit on your couch. It was like Fatletics nothing. rather than Fabletics. And watch her show. What is, Fabletics and, and all of those other brands, they still, um, you know they still have fat models so it's mm -hmm. not like you're differentiating yourself this is but this is why people love brandy melville and they love american apparel which now is like los angeles apparel and these controversial brands that have skinny models mm -hmm. um because they're unapologetic the early, it, it reminds them of the early 2000s when you looked to clothing lines and models for aspiration mm -hmm. rather than for validation. somebody to validate you yeah. and tell you that you look fine just the way you are. And it reminds you of like living in the before times before everyone was just yep. clinically insane and in denial about reality, which is that, you know, being fat, it's not healthy, but more importantly, it's not attractive. Not willing to. More importantly, that. it's not attractive. Yeah. Do you hear me? More importantly, <laughs> it is not attractive. Yeah. Okay, because there are plenty of thin people who are unhealthy too. My primary concern is that I don't want to look at that. She's like, I'm fine with being unhealthy. I'm not fine with being fat. Just so we're clear. <laughs> um, but yeah, her brand is called Yitty. That's There's a, let's, let's go to Super Chats. There's a $20 one right there. 
Uh, Baron of Grey Matter said, welcome back, Mary. Thank you for, for all of the warm welcome. Shane H. Wilder said, oh yeah, I forgot. How's the new maid, Mary? Are they keeping the abode cleaned to your liking? Oh, I, I what? Thought, no, because you what? said I was going to use, I was going to do maid. You when you were sick, you said. Oh, oh yeah. I was Fools. definitely considering moving to Canada and signing up for maid while I was you were, sick. Because you felt so sick. And they would be like, yeah, it's never going to get better. It's that meme where it's like. We're going to put um, you in the suicide pod now. <laughs> there's like the meme. It's like the doctor bill. And it's like um, the British version says, we'll see you in three months. Like, we'll see you in six months. The American one says, like, your bill is $67,000. The Canadian one says, have you considered killing yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shane H. Wilder said, no, Brett. April is straight pro. Straight pro. That's. Look, doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. <laughs> Gabriel was just something that I read, and it was something that they were that they were talking about. It was some college uh, announcing it. Didn't so. Super Straights um, announce a month for themselves? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I remember. I thought I thought July became MAGA month or MAGA month. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Tim 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 declared July MAGA month. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Jake Martin said some mofo's are always trying to ice skate uphill. Are they really? You saw that. <laughs> Someone was trying to ice skate uphill. Not One that John more. Stewart said, Brett, you mean he did it all for the beep? Uh, yes, that is exactly what Fred Durst did it for. All right, let's hold off on the rest and let's come back. Uh, okay. Mary, you're going to have to tell everybody what the hell's going on with Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It seems like baby fever is spreading amongst women in Hollywood and uh, also online influencers. Oh, oh. So, let's, uh, let's start that again because the camera didn't Well, switch. you heard it already. Yeah, so <laughs> Twitch streamer Pokimane has just hinted that she wants to have children imminently soon. So if any of you would like to be Pokimane's baby daddy, applications are officially open. She is looking for one. Um, and I say that because it's like women these days want to have children, but they don't want to have a husband to have them with, you know? It's like celebrated to have babies with boyfriends or friends even, mm -hmm. or polycules. It can never be done in a family unit. Uh, you notice that the Kardashians were kind of the first like to pioneer this being the just normal expectation, but I think it's weird when people talk about kids like this. Here's Pokemon's tweet. Kind of want another cat or a dog or a kid. And then it's the thinking emoji mm -hmm. where you're like stroking your beard. Feels so, like those should be considered at different weights, but. So you view a kid on the same level as a cat or a dog. Like I'm trying not to read into this too much, but yeah. like, um, you know how influencers treat their kids like accessories and like yeah. photo props mm -hmm. and also like adults, like employees who have to be part of the influencing empire. Mm -hmm. I just, when an influencer even hints that they want to have kids, I'm immediately thinking of the worst case scenario because it just kind of ends Frank. up like that. Way more often than not. Or maybe it's just me paying attention to the worst case scenario and not the ones I mean, who I'm, are protected, I'm, but I'm really, really. Um, mm. I, I lack a lot. Like for the most part, I look very, very wearily upon most influencers and things like that when it comes to any type of family content. <laughs> there's, the... a, there's a couple that I follow that are like pretty transparent about like their kids saying like, um, like they're they're a lot like if they don't want to be in stuff they don't have to be in anything yeah. one of the kids is in it more than the other ones because one of them kids would prefer to be more private than the other than the other would so as long as they're upfront about it even then i'm still like we have no idea whether this is accurate or not because what we hear and see from them is also very different from what goes on behind the scenes so you should take all of it with an enormous grain of salt yeah um well the reason that i said baby daddy applications are open is because <laughs> Now, Pokimane simps are volunteering as tribute to help Pokimane achieve her goal of motherhood. And it's still something that she <laughs> wants to pursue. As she claimed in an interview in March 2024, I've been talking about babies, she admitted. You know what's crazy? I dreamt about having a kid last night again. But interestingly enough, I know my baby fever isn't as bad as it could be because I'm dreaming about someone in close proximity of me having a kid, like a family member, and I'm just so excited to take care of them. I know I kind of want a baby, but I don't want a baby. Like, I want a baby. 
So <laughs> I don't know if she is really uh, able to decide what she wants. But um, this was in an interview she was doing with, I think, QT Cinderella. Um, yeah. She asked what her timeline is for possibly having children and she answered that she could see herself starting a family in her early to mid 30s although she's uncertain if she should get a surrogate adopt or quote just pump one out <laughs> there's just such a lack of ceremony and actual like connection behind the whole process now <laughs> you know what I mean? What is this? This is not... Uh, look, okay. By the way, for context, Pokimane is 27. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's talking about um, that she plans to have kids within the next, you know, half of a decade. At 27, like, this is when... This is actually the most appropriate time of any time to be yeah. thinking about starting a family and uh, more... Importantly, the first thing that happens before you do that, ideally, is you get married. Um, but it's like the idea of getting a husband before having a kid is totally alien to her. Like it yeah. never even occurred to her that you would need a father. That's because society, <laughs> the child. society has divorced these concepts. It's insane. Yeah. I mean, where do you think babies come from? These people are like children who never had the talk with their parents. They never Stork, had the birds and the bees talk. Stork just dropped it off in the... You just pump them out. What do you mean? It's not like we just hug each other. <laughs> and Or it's not like a stork, right? Like, just drops a baby off on your porch. Like, you need a mother and a father. See, that's the problem. That, that, that part of it doesn't line up to her because it's not child. necessary. And they All need to stay together. Yes. Right. But, no, it's just you're treating a kid like it's an accessory that you can buy or it's like a car um, and you get on a payment plan and it's all very bureaucratic. It's all very by the books. And there's nothing personal about it. There's nothing spiritual about it. It's not really all that important. It's just, you know, something that you decide will make your life better. And there's just, it seems that there's just no concern for the fact that this is another human being you're bringing into the world who deserves two parents. Really? And not just two parents, a mother and a father. Do you remember the influencer couple that like adopted a kid and then gave it back? Oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah, I do remember that. Mm. You know what they should have done is not publicize the fact that they were adopting in the first place. Well, that's the whole point. For clout. The whole point is that it was for clout, <laughs> yeah. which means that they didn't actually want to adopt the child for actual reasons. They wanted to do it yeah. because the internet is a drug and social media clout is like heroin to a lot of people. I mean, I think that it was complicated because I've heard other situations where like, People adopt thinking that it's just going to be like so perfect and they don't know that sometimes it doesn't go well, mm. especially if the child is older. I think, I think the child had like, uh, like, like disabilities. Yeah. Disability. yeah. Mm. And which they knew beforehand. Um, but like, I think that a lot of kids like get adopted and they're from a troubled home and then people just think like oh they're gonna be grateful <laughs> that right. we adopted them and it's like that's not how that works okay mm -hmm. um but it's just as you can see it's like a very selfish mentality that they have um celebrities and influencers alike that you're just talking about a kid like it's a cat a dog or a purse or a house what did you think of the dakota johnson oh, i'm sorry the dakota oh. fanning yeah, yeah. So Dakota Fanning. Dakota Johnson would have a very boring child. Dakota <laughs> Fanning, not so much. Dakota Fanning recently said having kids is more important to her than being an actor. Quote, always felt that pull. Um, she shared that if offered a choice between her career and starting a family, she would choose the latter. So here's her quote from a recent interview. And by the way, she is 30. Mm -hmm. Uh, she explained that she's set up her career. She's made sure to leave herself with the option to start a family. Quote, being an actor is a huge part of my identity. I don't really know who I am without it. But I also have a desire to set up my life and career so that I always have a choice. Having kids is probably more important to me than anything, even being an actor. If somebody said I had to choose, I would choose having kids. I'm one of those people who always felt that pull. One of those people. It's not like it's just 99% of people out there that, you know, want to continue the human race. Um, it just makes you kind of a weirdo. It's kind of quirky if you, if you want to have In Hollywood, it does. Well, kids. no, I think, here's the thing, though. I think you... Thank you. I think that you're, you're influenced by what surrounds you, and what thank surrounds you, you are people that aren't necessarily pulled to have children. 
She more so, she more so than a lot of other actors, because like the actors working on TV, there are lots of actors who have been on television, who have been married for 20 years, have kids, <clears throat> perfectly fine. It's it's a it's a living. It's just a little bit abnormal from how the average person gets by. Mm -hmm. But movie stars, you're more likely to see the people who, you know, they don't have the time or the inclination. You know, they're on set six months out of the year. They don't have the ability to do this or they don't want to make the, the, you know, the concessions that come with having kids. She comes from a movie background, which would be more likely that she would feel like that. So it probably does feel weird to her mm -hmm. to have that pull. Yeah. And like, she's obviously Chris in a Chris weird O'Donnell. culture. Chris O'Donnell quit, like, when he stopped making movies, he went to television because he said, look, I got kids. I want to be able to raise my kids and see my kids at night. So I'm going to go to L I'm going to go back to L.A. and do a, a television show that will allow me to live here, work here, and be home at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just um, the Hollywood elite lifestyle is not conducive to family life, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that's let alone their abhorrent ideas of toward families and, and I'm not, and I'm, not and I'm not kidding you when I say if you go go watch a random episode of a television show and you find a middle-aged actor that's on that show you will see that a lot of them have been married for a long time have plenty of kids like mm -hmm. that's not an uncommon thing because television tends to be more of a blue-collar work environment rather than movies which is just very different I recently saw this tweet um, discussing film said uh, we live in time a love story film starring Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield will release in fall 2024 described as the portrait of a marriage and what it means to create a family and obviously like my immediate reaction was um oh great a bad it's, portrait so it's gonna be a portrait of how awful yeah. it is to be married <laughs> which, which, and which is actually sad. how meaningless it is to create you, a family right when you think of like hollywood and the infrastructure that they've built and their ability to tell stories when they actually want to there could be great stories to be told if they would actually allow them but they just rarely do mm -hmm. yeah but you know same same theme here in the dakota fanning interview no no talk of how a male would actually be required <laughs> to well, create they, a they kid. They don't. They don't believe it's necessary. They can't anymore. wait for. They cannot wait for. Um. You know. Like what are they? What are they? Uh. Like surrogate wombs. Like yeah. like the mm -hmm. um. Artificial wombs. They yeah. want. They want artificial wombs, mm -hmm. and there are like researchers looking into like how to create a uh, viable embryo, a uh, viable human embryo using nothing but uh, an egg mm -hmm. and uh, st like stem cells from a man instead of sperm. So they basically want to make men obsolete so that we can like, you know, kill them all and live in a feminist utopia mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, expect the trains to still run on time and all of that <laughs> stuff <laughs> and have running water and all of those nice things well that's the thing they would have, to, men they, have, provided they, they would have to wait for the robots <laughs> who can do the like it's so I, every day i drive into work right now there's road <laughs> construction going on like on on the road as i'm leaving brunswick and i just see the cars and i'm just like the the women they drive right by it right they don't realize that you need those guys there mm. to do that job there has to be humans to do that you're the guys who take out your garbage the guys who, who right I, just imagine like one week into the matriarchal like utopia we're like, all someone's just car breaks fighting. down and we're like wait what do we do who do we call <laughs> what is it? like why is the side of my car peeling off because i don't know where to put the jack when i try to when i try to jack my why car are off? all our rims scratched yes exactly <laughs> that's exactly what would happen and in i mean there's there's also the really baited street interviews where like like, are men necessary in society? And the drunk woman no, is like, we're not no, not necessary. Not, yeah. I don't need that in my life. He's like, I don't need no man. And then the guy, I don't need a man. And of course, the guy's got to be sober. He's like, well, what about the... What about the plumbers and what about the the electric? And they're like, I don't like know. Like both of these, I hate both of these people. <laughs> like the the autistic street interviewer who's asking about plumbers. Right after he got done asking about like what what's your body count? Or, or rate yourself <laughs> on a scale of one to ten. Like that stuff is that stuff is hilarious. Okay. They're all like like the the chick who's like the size of the camera frame so like labels herself a ten, and the guy's literally falling out of the frame. Like how drunk was she? Like. A, Really? Well, it Very. takes a lot, but yeah, extremely, but, yeah. extremely <laughs> drunk, obviously. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess if any of you are interested in being Pokemon's Twitch husband, um, you too can apply. 
you two can apply. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's finish these super chats and then we'll hang out until five, guys. Corey Anderson said, Mary, welcome back. Hope you feel better. While you were gone, I didn't super chat anything untoward. Now that you're back, all bets are off. Christ is king. There you go. Oh, yeah. I um, unfortunately had to miss Easter Mass because I was Not feeling dying. Well. Uh, did you see the... Because um, of Brett. Did you see the um, thing about the, 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 gender st the gender history professor talking about Oppenheimer and how America has not paid... Oh, uh, the, you sent it to me. Yeah. But did you watch it? I didn't watch it. It's, I didn't feel like... It's really stupid. It's, sitting through it's that, no. really unbelievably... I got stupider <laughs> as I was watching it. Do they, like, teach in Japanese schools that, like, Pearl Harbor didn't happen or something? I don't know. I, like, I mean... Dude, I don't know, but they have, are so forgiving. They are very forgiving for, like, moving beyond that in their culture. I mean, a lot of... Well, but it, it seems like they haven't moved on no, from here's it. Because the, they're still, the, like... There's a list of <laughs> like still bitter. so Lauren Chen and a bunch of other people were listing out like the things that preceded uh -huh. the, that attack in the amount of stuff. Basically, they're saying like they had to be shaken out of a homicide, like a genocidal rage to stop them from doing that. In in those you know Hiroshima and Nagasaki were the only way to do that. Huh. Um, and a lot of people believe that, but it's just really funny because they didn't go and ask like an actual history professor. They went and asked like a history of gender <laughs> yeah. professor. Which isn't yeah. a thing. As it's far as I'm concerned, that's not a thing. Study. If podcaster isn't a real thing, then history of gender professor really isn't a podcaster thing. Podcaster is more real yes. than that. Mm -hmm. Pat the Plumber said, brought rocking the backwards hat. Yes. Brot? Brot is fun. Is that brot? Brot is fun. DC and C, Matrix filmed is Oz, movie world is effing sick. There huh? you go. Sounds, sounds good. What? It's co not coherent. I don't know what that means. Also, somebody did point out earlier that the ice skating uphill, that's a, that's a quote from the lead. <clears throat> um, Corey Anderson said, Mary, can you lift your left hand? I need to check something. Don't do it, Mary. Don't do it. <laughs> I, okay, fine. There. I mean, look, if I didn't, if I were like married and I didn't want you to know, I would literally just take off the ring. <laughs> but okay. Oh, okay. They were they were checking. Oh, to make I thought sure they're like, they're like trying to Mary. rope you into some kind of a ritual. Yeah. yeah no, I'm not not down for any rituals. <sighs> Texas Mofo said, "Glad that Mary has overcome mange withdrawals." Oh, okay. So here's here's the funny yeah, it was thing. Difficult we got a, to we got a comment on like the Monday mm -hmm. episode with somebody saying like, uh, "Why didn't you let Shane talk about what happened at the C two E two convention unsubbed?" I said he literally said he didn't want oh, to talk about it. Oh my gosh! Just people think they know everything, yeah. don't they? Because he literally. We were going to talk about that, and he decided not to. Yeah, he said, I don't want to do it while wearing the, you know, while in the in the character that he does. Yeah. So I said, okay, that's fine. Otherwise, we were planning to talk about it. Uh, but uh, get the whole story before you. Before you, you know do what? That. They weren't going to stick around anyway. It was something else was going to set them off. Right. They don't love us. DCNC said, Menti health days are important, Mary. Glad you're <laughs> feeling better. <laughs> Look, blame Brett. If you should be blaming anyone for my absence, there is no it's proof. Brett. There is no proof whatsoever that I am the one that caused this. Okay. Oh. I feel like go back to Tuesday's episode last week and listen to what Brett sounded like and tell me there's no <laughs> proof again. Look, it, but you didn't get sick till Sunday. You're telling me it, like it there just was a gestation. No, no, no. Period. I got sick. I got sick on Friday night. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Miss me with that. I'm I'm proclaiming I'm gonna I'm gonna maintain my innocence. Okay. I'm gonna maintain my innocence. That's okay. You know, you believe whatever you want to believe. I will. A magic monkey said, talk to the quartering about multicasting. He streams to literally everything all at once. Yeah, and I saw some somebody mention about um I, I got a link from Serenko about an OBS plugin to hopefully simulcast to Twitter. So I'll I'll be working on that. So we got a we got a very cool. the next two weeks are going to be very hectic because you're going to be out of yeah. town Monday through Wednesday. Um, it's just going to be a very hectic period of time here, but we'll get on it. Is that actually like in the works? Like we're actually going to do that? I mean, I'm going to look into the plugin, uh -huh. and then I have to get the login information for the Twitter because we don't run the Twitter. I have the login. Okay. <laughs> Jim J M Director said Boomer TV podcast. When Brett? Here here's the thing, like. It would have to be like dedicated to specific shows, and those uh, those are very difficult to do because like if you make a whole podcast about one show, the audience then doesn't translate over to the next show you decide to do. You have to start a whole new 
thing. Like I've never seen any of the mm-hmm. people, like I've seen people who make podcasts about shows that I like, then go on to do podcasts about other shows. They, a lot of them tend to be doing more than one show at a time. I don't know how they find <laughs> the time for it if they don't do it for a living, but they find the time for it. Um, I would love that. I would, what it is, is I would need like every time I go on one, one of these rants about these shows that I like and somebody else likes it, I get really excited and I'm like, we should do this. But you know, perhaps one day. I'll okay. Time. There's your answer. Perhaps one day. Gordon Shumway said, Heather's is like mean girls, except the main characters kill the mean girls. Fun. I mean, I heard that before that comparison before I saw Heather's. I don't think it's like exactly accurate have you guys ever heard but of the movie uh good. death to a cheerleader no i believe that's what it's called death to a cheerleader never seen it is it about um, death to a cheerleader yeah so it's about this <laughs> girl who gets bullied by this cheerleader or she's like jealous of her and she murders her and it's based on a true story and um Whoa. it actually i grew up right next to the school that it happened to is it good that. uh it's like a made for tv movie oh but it wasn't bad for a made for tv movie yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane H. Wilder said, can we stop making gay-ass musicals out of cult classic movies? Hollywood no. Hollywood says no. No. Sorry. Hollywood says no. Your They're going to keep on trying to trick us into seeing musicals until we wise up to it. Yoshima Otaru said, hard rain is about a heist during a flood. Fun. Well, if a woman's nipples cool. have to be hard, well, on a heist in the middle of the rain, I guess that's what's got to happen. The director was a visionary. The director <laughs> it gets cold. It gets cold. Pat the Plumber said, Mary, you don't look remotely sick. Be honest. You were off haunting a house in New England. <laughs> Is that what you were doing? Um, yeah, that's that's what I do in my free time. Shane H. Wilder said, to be fair, Brad, I've never done drugs, but Requiem for a Dream effed me up. Good movie, but I could never watch it again. Yeah, it's not really one you want. Like, if you know somebody who watches it more than once, they're pretty weird. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, every every couple of months, I just they wa- enjoy watch psychological rec- abuse. Yeah. I like to see it, what utter evil and hopelessness looks like yeah well that's the thing I, when i hear something like that about a movie it doesn't intrigue me at all like i'm just never gonna watch it yeah I, I tend to stay away from people who are too into movies like that like movies that are really like dark i loved or like it. it made me feel like draining. my entire world was collapsing like was so sometimes arcing. when i'm in a really good mood i go watch cannibal holocaust or house of a thousand corpses <laughs> that's what i do <laughs> Red flag. Yep. Shane H. Wilder said, yay, started, started a new age living commune. Oh, so a cult. Well, I mean, everyone left the cult, so maybe he's not a skilled cult leader. He'll have to work on <laughs> he that. He doesn't have good retainment rates. Yeah. Um, Corey Anderson said, how many white kids do you think went to Donna Academy? It's a good question. I bet plenty, right? Like, there are so many rich white parents yeah. in that area, I'm right? Sure it was a very mixed school. Yeah. Um, 200 Watt Studios said, um, I don't know what T-O-H-O means, um, about to sue Lizzo for the Zillow infringement. Toho? To- I don't know what that oh, is. Oh, the brand Toho. Okay. Uh, he also said, wow, Lizzo makes Ethan Van Skyver look thin. <laughs> Lizzo's a big, uh, big gal. You said it, not me. Um, Corey Anderson said Lizzo's chest <laughs> looks like a landslide of human flesh. Uh, a bit. Uh, one ex. One time at band camp. Oh, one time at band camp. Said I need a haircut. I'm actually going to get my haircut today after after the show. Nice. Mm-hmm. Shane H. Wilder said Le- Lizzo, please quit. And by quit, I mean the five Big Macs with a side of Krispy Kremes. Something is wrong when the scale and. and when the scale asks you to get off. It's fair to point out that one of the things that everybody seemed to say, even though despite her size, is that she's kind of like a linebacker, meaning that she's in really good yeah. shape. Meaning that For she, a can fat do, person. she can do a whole concert and not be tired. It's yeah. kind of like a pro wrestler being in ring shape. Uh-huh. Um, you know, they have to wrestle for 30 minutes without getting tired which is very very difficult so yeah. she's in shape for like in shape to do her job but it's just not healthy for her long term like her knees are taking more abuse than they need to yeah mm-hmm. her cardiovascular health is like impeccable yes for her size she should post um her blood tests results should prove everyone um how healthy she is pat the plumber said i knew lizzo for being fat before i knew she sang you just thought she was fat for a living? That was her job. <laughs> so what do you like what do you do for a living? You're just fat? <laughs> yep. Um 
Baron of Grey Matter, or sorry, Dave Collins, said Lizzo just performed at a fundraiser attended by three United yep. States presidents. Her claiming to be oppressed somehow is beyond ridiculous. And with charges pending, I might add. That is kind of crazy. <laughs> They're like, I, look, look, look. Yeah. We believe in innocent until proven guilty. And as far as I'm concerned, this does not look like the face of a woman who would make you eat a vagina out of a prostitute's but uh, Eat a... Banana. Yeah, banana. <laughs> out of out a of prostitute's vagina. banana. Same thing. <laughs> Duchovny. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't look like a. She does not look Kabeel. like a banana. She doesn't look like a banana feeder to me. That's what the. That's what Biden said. Obama was just like slay. <laughs> to be fair, my screw make those de- my backup dancers eat bananas. My screw up there could just be me doing a Biden impression. So we're good. Actually, I love that. Yeah. That was a great Biden impression. I didn't screw it up. Oh. I was just impersonating Biden. Duchovny. <laughs> Micah Kazikis. Mine was not worse than that. Come on. Jillian no. Anderson. <laughs> no, Brett's was worse. Fair. Uh, Micah Kaziki said, Mary, no good marriage has ever ended in divorce. Um, I mean, that, that might be a fair general statement to make, but it, do- it doesn't mean I think those marriages should end. Period. I don't know. Um, if there are things true. you can do to make your marriage better. I'm more impressed yeah. by your ability to pronounce that name on the first go. Because <laughs> I heard what you say it? it before, right? No, I've never Micah said that. Micah Kaziki. I've never said know. that name before. Um, but yeah, I just think that you know people don't even consider fixing their marriage problems often. Not um, anymore. At least mm-hmm. in this certain cohort in Hollywood, because um, it gets you more press to. To do the opposite. Do it on a podcast. Prince Elian said, Gen X are here. Mary's back. Do, 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 do. Mary's back. Do, do, I think do, it's do, a do. Mary J. Blige song. No. Oh, I thought they was doing like a Wait, what? Eminem. Like, <laughs> guess who's back. Oh, I guess. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Uh, Taylor Swift, greater than Disney, Star Wars, and MCU, sent $1 without a message. Thank you. Thank you. Shane H. Wilder said, when Pokimane said surrogacy adoption or pumping one out, I took off my glasses in order to slap myself in the face. WTF, my brain hurts now. I, I think it's fair to point out that what it is is like we look at, we're looking at this stuff through like through a fairly like critical and kind of political lens, the way we're talking about these socio sociopolitically. She's like giving like an off the cuff interview and is very clearly not treating it with the seriousness that we are. No, but I think the way that people joke about these things or the way that people talk about these things off the cuff is telling for what they really think about the issue deep down if you're talking about the natural process of conceiving and gestating and birthing a child as pumping one out comparing it obviously putting it down in comparison to adoption or surrogacy which is you know hiring out a third world or to carry your child or someone else's child maybe um there's obviously just a lot of disgust and like shame and revulsion around just the actual process of like reproducing mm-hmm. as it exists naturally yes for some reason and and a lot of fear like a lot of women just have this crippling fear well they've been sold propaganda for 20 years that having a child is a prison and as that if that's not like life. literally what your body is yeah. built to do mm-hmm and designed to do obviously things go wrong sometimes but um there's a lot of propaganda bender the offender said not saying she wouldn't be a good mother but the world doesn't need another mom and mom influencer i mean hopefully she would just keep her kid out of yep. what she does for a living yeah. but that happens rarely 200 watt studios said mary can you hold your hands behind your head i want to check your elbows What's wrong with your elbows she's not a monkey I don't understand. She's also got a long sleeve shirt on, so I don't think. Uh... Yeah, I don't. What? <laughs> Is there like a, supposed to be a lesion on there that <laughs> you're going to detect? <laughs> That's the strep lesion. Ah. Um, Shane H. Wilder said, "I have, you know what you wait. I have, you know that I have been blaming Brett." 
I think mean, I hope you know that I've been oh. born and bred. <laughs> okay. I think. That's good. That's what you should do. The, DC and C. I mean, if it's his fault. Wrong. You know. <laughs> wrong. Wrong. DC and C said chicken lady inventing new strains of avian flu. Could be. <laughs> I, I heard Kim talking earlier and her voice is just like gone. Yeah, dude. I she think was, there's like a bio attack on Tim Cass because everyone just keeps getting sick. Yeah, something's wrong. Well, I mean, I got sick over a weekend, so it didn't happen, like, I, I guess, what would you say, like, uh, it happened, lo- like, during the week, but I didn't start feeling crappy until the weekend. The weekend yeah, well, because it usually mm-hmm. takes a couple days mm-hmm. after, like, you're exposed. Remember, like, during the pandemic, when <laughs> everyone, was, everyone was saying that you can be, uh, like, a, what is it, asymptomatic carrier. Mm-hmm. carrier of COVID for, like, over a month or longer. Yeah, that was just a ploy to get like out of two work. Weeks. That was literally yeah. a ploy to just never interact with anyone again. Yeah, to not have to go to work. House, just in case. <laughs> Better the Offender said, Mary, you know blaming men for your issues won't solve anything. Brett, you did nothing wrong. Thank you. My- okay, Brett isn't men. Brett is Brett. Brett is one man. I'm one man. <laughs> he is one man. Yeah. Carrying and he is to blame. <laughs> virus. <laughs> I did nothing wrong. You guys are all just have really weak immune systems. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. Okay, we'll go with that narrative. <laughs> it was the Brett pandemic. It was. <laughs> Yurishima Utaru said, Toho owns Godzilla and are very litigious. She should go around in a Godzilla suit. She should. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Did you see that thing where like they uh, made the Godzilla they suit. made Godzilla the police chief in Japan for a day? <laughs> it was awesome. I love how they play into it. Yep. That's not awesome. Totally they have is. such a weird sense of humor. It freaked me out when I saw that. <laughs> Carnell said, Brett, you're right. Lizzo is in shape. She's round. I'll see myself out. Fair enough. She's in a shape. I mean, There's certainly a shape. It's more Spherical. of like a it's more it's a of like a blobby oval. Blobby, a, blo- a blobby oval. I've never heard blobby as an. It's kind of like human oval teen. Ever drink oval teen? It's that chocolate milk. No, stuff, we right? had Nesquik. Okay. In my household, you had oval teen instead. I didn't have that either. I, I had a friend who had oval teen. I, I didn't drink either of. Those. You know what I did? It was so effed up. I would just like spoon it. I would just eat it. Ugh. Like the straight. Did powder? you ever do that? Mm-mm. I did that. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know if we have any more. Prince uh, L E N, L L E N. Oh, uh, Mary's back in the note of Baby Shark. Oh, Mary's back, doo doo doo. <laughs> Mary's back, doo doo. Shane H Wilder said, "To be honest, I blame Brett for everything. World War II, Brett's fault. Fall of the Roman Empire, Brett's fault. My typos when using my phone, Brett's fault." Look, it's my cross to bear as the as the male in society. It's my job to, <laughs> to take all of your guys' screw ups and own up to them, and hopefully make the world a better place because you guys can't. So yeah, you know, that's that's fine. I accept that. That's my cross to bear. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. With that being said, uh, would you guys hit the like button on this video, please, and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Go and do it now, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Definitely check out Casper Coffee on Twitter. We are at Casper Coffee. Um, if you haven't tried our other flavors already, Appalachian Nights, yes, it is our most popular flavor. But there's other flavors out there too. Try them all. Uh, if you don't, Tim's going to get mad at me. And uh, thank you, Brett and Mary, for having me. All right. Mary. Okay. You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X. That is also Mary Archived. All right, so we got one more here from Corey Anderson. It says, Mary, thanks for bringing me closer to God. I don't know what to what to think of this. You, you're always joking, so I don't know what to make of it. And one more from 200 Watt Studios nice. says, I want an inflatable sumo suit to wrestle Lizzo. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you could win in a fight with Lizzo, no. Brett? No, I don't. Do you no, think dude, Phil could win in a fight with Lizzo? Size, the size See, that's advantages. the interesting yes. question. That would be a fun fight to watch. Because we already know that I would lose in a fight with Phil. Um... I would lose in a fight with Lizzo. I'm pretty sure I would lose in a fight with Lizzo. If it were a high speed chase, yes. that's a different story. Yeah, if all you have to do is run away. A <laughs> hundred meter dash. Yes. Um, right. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> if you would like to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram or Twix at Brett Dastavik on both of those platforms. This show is here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. We are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify if you would prefer to listen rather than watch. And if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show, Facebook and not TikTok at PopCultureCrisis, and on Instagram at PopCultureCrisisPod. Guys, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Thank you.